what's up, treasure hunters? Welcome to uh, the next installment of Trash of Treasure with me, Kyle Eastburn, and Max Bresson's hanging out right over here on the ones and twos. Uh, we got a very special episode today. Um, welcome back, my father, Rick Hall, and I'm going to let him introduce you to the other two. All right. How you doing, man? Uh, today we have with us my dear friend, Charlie Williams, BMX legend, Whatever. current <laughs> national reigning champion in 56 and over cruiser. And my also other very dear friend, Tom Johnson, the current and reigning national champion in 56 and over expert in class or 20 inch for those who run in BMX. You. Yeah. Yeehaw. All right. So, yeah, we like to uh, to start the podcast. We And it's going to we got three people. Pop, we've already had you on to give your intro to give, but we like to give a baseline to our listeners. So go ahead and take a minute. The floor is yours. Just let them know where you're from. And just like if there's anything that comes to mind about you that, that you want to say, you know, this, this, we like to begin and end the podcast where the floor is yours. Let people know who you are, where you're from, what's your deal. Let's have, let's have Tom go. <laughs> he's, he's the youngster. Rip it up, Tom. He's the youngster. <laughs> he's the youngster. Let yes. it rip, Tommy. Yes. Uh, Tom Johnson, originally from Torrington, Connecticut. Um, came down to Florida about uh, seven years ago. Um, Got back into BMX when I got down here. I was out of it for a while, and uh, yeah, just uh, living the dream. All right, yeah, hell yeah, amen. amen. Yeah, and Max, uh, uh, Charlie Williams here. You know, um, I am uh, born and raised Los Angeles or Burbank, California, and now I am a uh, proud Floridian hey. as yeah. of uh, 2021, and and um, but really just landed here last year, and and. Um, I'm I'm great to sit here with yourself and 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 these two stooges and and uh, now that I would call my 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 East Coast family Amen. and Absolutely. uh you know it's just uh how life unfolds and how we ended up here you know it is just uh is a complete blessing and and it's just um you know I would have never imagined I'd be here in Florida or the East Coast at this part in my life and and just uh uh wait to see, just waiting to see what it all unfolds and yeah. excited for it is there like comparisons between now i imagine you guys have probably both traveled like is there comparisons between the east and west i mean on all fronts well, it it's i'll just say it's it's always been a rivalry it's been oh, in, in for, for the okay. bmx for the so that goes for, across the board yes, oh yeah for the, for the bmx and it's even as, big as, even, even tom saying <laughs> tom saying he's from connecticut uh yeah it, I didn't know it's that, always either. been uh you know west coast was Versus the originators east. and better than the east coast and were they yeah. like the OGs? Of? The West Coast was, always, was OG. Yeah, it, it was yeah, always sure. the other way around, though. The East Coast was always a little better than the West Coast. Well, you they started in the West, but then we we made it better in yeah. the East. You know, so. <laughs> well, now the East Coast is better. We got Charlie with us. So. <laughs> now, when, when was this? When was like the original push? When I like when BMX was like early mid seventies. Yeah. Er, er, oh, yeah. yeah, early mid seventies. Yeah, a guy by the name of Scott Brythop um, started hosting races uh, on this dirt hill somewhere with pretty much no jumps just downhill yeah. and that's where it all started right there yeah, yeah. yeah. and that was california california that was california, california. Yeah. okay Absolutely. all right se racing he started, he started se oh. you know oh. my pk ripper yeah so yeah. scott started se racing in uh, okay yeah. s scott enterprise where the scott bikes, enterprise the that's where all the man different well and that's where all the manufacturers started from you know all the oh, first right. manufacturers of all the bmx Came I I I want to say came out of out of uh, out of California or the West Coast. Yeah, yeah, I mean yeah. right here in Deland, I'm a skydiver. In all of the top manufacturers, are they literally right in like Deland. they're in the same business park oh. as Skydive Deland? Okay. So it's, I yeah. put an elevator in one of their buildings. Yeah, me too. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you were not Deland. I did it at the, uh, at oh, the okay. weed store or like the weed plant. <laughs> Nice. Oh, that one too. Yeah, yeah I forgot. Yeah, no, that's a that's a marijuana facility. Uh, yeah. Manufacturing, distribution, and processing. <laughs> yeah, anyway. Long story there. I'm standing on the roof with the contractor, and I'm, I keep looking yeah. around, going, "He's like something wrong." I was like, "No, I just, God, I swear, I smell marijuana. Somebody's growing it or something." He goes, "Yeah, the big yeah, green building over there is where they grow it. Sure. The big blue building is where they process it, and then all those loading docks and stuff." I said, "Oh, that's why the gate and the guys with Uzis out front." He's yeah. like, "Yeah, you got it." Is that where uh, is that where freestyle BMX started too, or was it all down? Like, 
I know the West Coast. I mean, they had the. It's just the mecca for all extreme sports, really. Uh, pretty much across the board. Yeah. I, I, so I, it makes sense. But then I also get what these guys are saying. You know, we're going to take it. And we're gonna I, I do. I do. Fine-tune we're going to improve. I would say though, what <laughs> what 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 I uh, learned was at the Hall of Fame this last year. They have a Hall of Fame inductee for BMX every year. Spectacular. And, and so uh, and. There was a, a woman that's from Florida, Alice Bixler, yes. that was that was inducted, and she started what? I mean, it, 74? In 74, 75. Yep. She'd been in for you know forty years. So so forty years, is, yeah, but, yeah. But so she'd been in in BMX. Oh, more than that, probably. Yeah. But, yeah so, but it, but it, but yeah, she, yeah. she has been in involved in BMX, so running it, it setting up tracks, and and getting kids involved since nineteen seventy four, and so. That's kind of when I would say you know the BMX started on the on the West Coast too. So it's it's just uh, you know it's it, they're pioneers here too. And, and oh yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, and it's I mean everywhere you go that, isn't that that's art. You know, yeah, like, yeah. I would look at I would look at I mean especially watching him build the way he does and and, and customize these bikes and now to see the passion grow into more of an active lifestyle. It's art. It's, it's no different than when I play the guitar or when I go surfing or. Whatever I do, it's just, it's a form of expression. You and guys, the collectors. Do. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. that's how I got back in. I got back in about twelve, yeah. maybe twelve years ago yeah. or so, yeah. when Tim Hewitt, you know, started coming home with these twenty-six inch BMX bikes, you know, PK oh, Rippers right. and stuff. I'm like, what? what? You know, and uh, he introduced me to Ed up at Planet BMX, mm-hmm. and Ed pretty much is responsible. Got to give him a shout out for <laughs> for bringing all us old guys back to mm-hmm. BMX with. With, uh, you know, it started off as coloredtuffs.com in his garage. He got with Kane Coster from uh, Skyway nice. and uh, talked him into doing a few rounds of Tough Wheels. And the rest is history. I mean, he just took off like a rocket ship. Now Planet BMX is, is just like one of the best mail order places for retro BMX. Right. Um, so he, he never got you into... No, I was... Uh... I discouraged him one day. No. <laughs> Come on, Pop, let's race. No, no. <laughs> It was uh, like, I mean, I grew up like all the other street rats, you know, oh, okay. skating and surfing around. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I tried the BMX thing, but like I grew up in that X Games era okay. where it was like freestyle. Yeah, yeah it was, yeah, yeah. It was street yeah. skating. It was everything else. Mm-hmm. And then I actually got one, one of his GTs got stolen under my watch. And I was like petrified of bikes after I would only ride my skateboard because he just got his GT. He was all psyched about it. I took him to the skate park. Uh, and he, oh, yeah, of course he fucking remembers that. Still holding the, 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 the grudge. Yeah, no grudge. Um, and honestly, though, because CJ, my cousin, tried BMX racing one time. That's and right, Pop yeah. mentioned it to me. I thought it was cool, but it was like that transition into high school where I was just like, eh, It's nothing, a unique sport. It is a unique you know, like, sport. I want to get high on the beach and surf you know just yeah. like a little rebel shit well there yeah. there, there was a time where it died there being i wouldn't i'll, I'll say bmx died yeah yes and it was there was just this transition from if you'd say you know you know from the late 80s and at that point then the, then the manufacturing started going overseas oh. and 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 then freestyle really came up and that kind of took over yeah. and and the the money wasn't there you know because I'll tell you, in the early 80s, in the 80s era, there was <laughs> amateurs that got paid to race yeah. on factory teams. Yeah. And so... Sours, yeah. Uh, That's about us. Yeah, and it was, it was good. Hell yeah. It, 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 it was, was healthy. Good. It was healthy. You, yeah, you know, and, and, and so... And that's, but then when those, when those, uh, when that money dried up, then it was kind of, um, you know, it, it's what sent me, what's, what, what, what I, what stopped me from racing BMX, yeah. you know, and that, and it's, and it's, that was, this is, you know, my situation, but that there was that time from the late eighties or probably early nineties. And, and I don't know with Tom, with, when he stopped, I stopped in yeah. 86 and got back into it in 90. Okay. So, so it was only like, then yeah, it was still okay. Right. Um, but you were seeing like the, smaller manufacturers kind of get out of it mm-hmm. because they couldn't compete with the big manufacturer being like gt power light right. auburn you know it's one conglomerate if you will yeah um, which you is, know yeah it's hard to this modern i mean that's just yeah. corporate america right there yep. and it's fine. exactly yeah. exactly and then i think it was 95 schwinn got involved back involved and, you know oh, so okay. a I lot to, of 
Oh, go ahead. Sorry. No, I'm just saying a lot of uh, a lot of different manufacturers were from past were coming back, but they were making it much larger. Mm -hmm. um, but you had the small companies that kind of were dying away, you know, like uh, Thruster, and I'm just trying to think. Like yeah. CW kind of went away, right? That's and right. Yeah. So it was like, you know, it was a new, new style, if you will, of how things were run. Yeah, where like before it was kind of like a free for all. Fit. It kind of, you know, it's like. I hear a lot of uh, motocross guys come from this area right here, mm -hmm. you know, and, and they speak about it kind of the same way. Sure. In the Krusty Demons era, mm, coming yeah, up, that was, you know, it was just chaos and, was... and underground and a bunch of just grungy yeah. people yeah. that loved fucking racing. Yeah. And, and, and partying. Yeah, 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 there you absolutely. go. Guilty. <laughs> absolutely. And then, because especially in, in your sport, I have to imagine, like, when you're getting paid as, as an amateur I have no idea what it takes on a training level to stay up to date at a high gear level. But like, you, I mean, you should, if you're not getting paid, you now have to work a fucking full-time job. You mm -hmm. got to allocate enough time for training and, and diet and nutrition. And then right. you got to get out on the track. It just doesn't add up. I mean, yeah. some people can do it, but you got to be broken in the head. Yeah. Did, were, did you guys ever find yourselves in your careers doing that where you're like, you just don't have any time for anything. Because you're, you're either working, training, racing, like, and it's all BMX, all the way. Yeah, yeah, yeah well, I mean, it's... it's I mean, you raced full it, factory hutchback. Yeah. Was it like well, that? Well, there, there, there was a lot of teams, but, you know, for, for California, and I'll say this is the, the advantage from California, is, or, or Southern California, is you had a lot of local tracks. You had climate that you could ride all year round. Uh, you, you were in a big city with, you know, hills and mountains, and, and you had all different terrain. So we just rode our bikes. I mean, I honestly didn't train. I race. I rode my bike every day, you know. You just motor and, and just just rode Same just thing. rode around as kids having fun from from thirteen to eighteen, yeah. and and less at seventeen and eighteen. But but from riding around Wonder and then racing, that. then you're racing <laughs> locally. You're racing locally a, a couple times a week, and then and then going to the nationals. There wasn't there wasn't training for me. Now I know other guys the same age as me, yeah. or in other people, that were really training. Yeah, that were really training, and their their dads or whatever had mm -hmm. it, and yeah. um, it was just that's how just you know love bikes. You yeah. just it was just the love of bikes and riding. Yeah. Same yeah. here. There's no better training than just going out and riding your bike. We had a good group of guys where I grew up. Um, you know, it was probably about twenty of us. Mm -hmm. that we all had BMX bikes. Some guys raced, some guys didn't race, but we'd ride together all the time. Yep. We had spots where we, you know, like we had this called ravine behind Kmart. We had a big jump and yeah, stuff and land the flat. And too. Stuff yeah, like just, that. Yeah, just, just eat yeah it. exactly. <laughs> exactly. Thought, you know, do big one, no handers. And just, jump, yeah. tr jump truck comes yeah. in and dumps a big load of dirt on a job site and we'd go pack it down for the next four hours and make a jump out of it, you know. Yeah, like, there's this empty lot, I remember, that had a pile of dirt on it. It was probably maybe three and a half, four feet tall. And, you know, we beat a path to it, and, and it, was just, we, it was like a big roller, if you will. Mm -hmm. And that's where I learned how to, what I call speed jump, pick up your front tire and just pedal over it. Mm -hmm. And that's where, I, and I'm watching Richie Anderson do that as a kid, and I was like, man, I want to learn how to do that. And that's, okay. that's where I did it. And I just go there all day and just go back and forth, back and forth, you know. So that was the only training, like Charlie's saying, we just rode our bikes. I that's love it. that. Yeah. yeah. I absolutely love yeah. it. It's like, do you see the sport picking back up now? Like, in the, a lot of these sports are going, especially it's like once corporate gets a hold of them. And they figure out a way to market it. Then you see this whole new push. You know, like I follow surfing or disc golf. Who'd have thought that people were getting <laughs> million golf. dollar contracts right. in disc golf? Yeah. Now. Yep. Um, so right. just, I just, I didn't even know it was an option for Pop to get back in. But when he's like, oh, now he's all in. I'm like, fucking do it, Pop. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Like you're retired, send it. Yep. So like, is it a, is it, is it back? Like in, to its former glory? Or is it just like some diehard bikers just that still love doing the sport? I think it's, it's a, uh, it's a. Uh... Some people die hard, right? And oh, like, yeah. you got guys that are racing from it's the 80s. New energy or whatever. Yeah. Exactly. A new, and new path. You, you got guys go, coming back that used to race back in the day and stuff, and uh, which is great for the sport, obviously. Uh, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, and it's definitely helping the older class, like we, you know Charlie and I race and stuff. Um, but I really feel like I was actually seeing today a post that 1983 Murray World Cup. Were you there, Charlie? Yeah. Yeah. So the pro purse for first place. Oh, I saw that. Yeah. Did you see that? I it's did. It's 10 grand. In 1983. 1983. And, and Pro Cruiser. And I just, Pro Cruiser, too. Yeah, Pro yeah, Cruiser, right. yeah. Yeah, Pro Cruiser, yeah. I was like, 
This is crazy. Like, and what was it this year? It's I like don't even know what it was this year. Or something. But I, I just was... found out that the Worlds is going to be going on for the pros next weekend. They're only paying top three. UCI has decided mm. that they're only paying the top three. Wow. And I just, I, I, you know, these guys make it, are trying to make a living at this. They're putting air, all their efforts in it. And they're not just riding their bikes, at, you know, to train. They're actually physically training. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yes. So it's a bigger picture in that realm of what they're actually doing versus what Charlie and I do right now. You know, like, mm-hmm. yeah. So. It all comes down to marketability. Yeah. You know, and, and we talk about it across all sports. We've talked about it many shows. We've had pro fighters, pro surfers, where, like, We've reached this weird realm where, like, they, money doesn't even get involved unless, like, you got a social media following right. or, or, like, you, you're fucking sellable. You know, you could be the best. I, you know, I'm a stand-up comic and a podcaster. I could be I could be telling the best jokes in the world. Or, you know, you can be the hardest training BMXer in the world, and then you cut out of the money for some bullshit. Yeah. It's, it's wild, but, hey, the thing about, that sorts out the purest from yeah. the non-purest. I'll tell you that right now. The sure. thing about BMX today is... What I believe USA BMX or UCI or whoever it was that sent BMX to the Olympics is they made it a more exciting sport. That's why the tracks are asphalt and rock hard now because there's so much more speed from back in our day. We rode on crushed shell, you know, soft sand and the flat turns. You had to put your foot down. You know, I was watching old pro races from back in the 80s and I'm going, man, look how slow they're going. They're still going fast. Oh, I know they were going fast, fast, but if you compare it to watching a video of one of today's races, it's just, it's It's amazing. amazing. It's it's a different animal, right? Totally different. 40 years difference. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. 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 And it's like, I, you know, following, following BMX back in the eighties, I don't remember ever even seeing anything from other countries, really. I mean, maybe the Japanese had some racers back in the day or something, but now I was just watching some videos from some of our guys that are up at Worlds right now because World Championships, UCI, are up in South Carolina, right? South Carolina? Rock Rock Hill, yeah. Rock Hill, South Carolina. Carolina. And uh, there's 50 different countries represented at Worlds this year. That's awesome. Unbelievable. That's so cool. So they got that. They got X Games on TV. X Games, I think, has helped boost big time for all the flat track, all crazy uh, vert guys and whatnot, you know, the... I fear that even that time is about to pass because they just they took it to a whole new level. You know, I remember when I first started watching S Games, it was like Mike Metzger doing the the back to back backflips or uh, yep. Tommy Tommy Flowers going Carrie Hart, mm-hmm. yeah, doing like right. it was who could take it bigger. And now you got guys doing like triple backflips on dirt bikes. Oh, it's still dude. It's like we got guys doing quadruple backflips uh, on a bike on BMX. Did bikes. you see that Ryan scooter? Williams guy? Is you just... watched the Nitro Circus? Yeah. I just yeah. saw a video the other day. He's a scooter rider, which is weird to say, but he's yeah. badass. <laughs> no, this dude is rowdy on big jumps. Yeah. He just he jumps on a BMX bike. He does. What was it? Like he does a front flip, he flips the bike, yeah, catches it, and then keeps continuing. The front. Right. I'm that's like, what the R. fuck Willie. was that, dude? Yeah. That's Ryan Williams. That guy. R. Willie. Yeah, R. Willie. That R. dude Willie. broke it. He man. is. He is. Uh, <laughs> dude, if I get out of bed like fast, I get, I get oh, like yeah. dizzy. You know, like I, I threw my back out a couple months ago by rolling over in bed. <laughs> oh good lord, what happened? You gotta go to your yeah. buddies and try to lie about it. Like, what happened to you, man? Out moving a fridge? No, <laughs> nope. just fucking just pillows. Turn right on. <laughs> exactly. I fell off the bed. All right. Trying so to put we, my flip flops on. I hit a pause button real quick because I love the baseline of BMX. Um, but I want to ask you guys something. It's kind of like a trash to treasure moment. Go for I it. got these little talking points. Um, I know we've talked about. I think everybody here in this room has seen the dark side of life one time or another. Um, and it, something caught my eye the other day. So I'm gonna put it out there and just I want to see what you guys think about it um basically it's stating that anxiety is really just a conspiracy theory that we have about ourselves so well, i wish i could sure believe that <laughs> you, you, no no if, oh, if I, you, I believe it but i wish i could live it <laughs> okay so yeah. but you think it's true probably like especially like if i take it back to like honestly not all that long ago when when i didn't see any fucking light Mm-hmm. And I just thought worse to myself. But then you, you kind of realize, you know, it's, it goes back to that old adage about being like your own worst enemy. So do you think there's any validity to that? Like the thought that, you know, it's it's basically up to us to conquer anxiety. And we have that power through Absolutely. daily ritual, sure. maybe a diet, exercise yeah. or anything. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I just I'd love to hear y'all's perspective on this. 
I'm actually reading a book right now called uh, Atomic Habits. I don't know if you ever read it. No, I haven't. It's and, uh, to list, though. It's you know, it's basically changing the bad habits in your life one habit at a time. And uh, it's it's you know, I'm only starting the beginning of it, so I don't have the whole thing. But no, it's uh, it, it's interesting to know that, like we were just talked about earlier, taking sugar out of your diet. If that's what you want to do, you can do it. Mm-hmm. It's it, you have the control to change you mm-hmm. and everything about you or what you do. And you know the bad parts of what you do. So if you're wanting to change those things, you can do it. It's, that brings me back to this. There's this, uh, there's this saying where it's basically uh, a fool or a wise man learns more from his enemies than a fool from his friends. And then if you – and then like on the backside of it, I thought about it. Well, you know, I don't really have any enemies, but I hate myself. So if I'm my own worst enemy, like I got all the answers. <laughs> You know what I mean? It's not some fantasmal. So why can't we fix it? Exactly. And that's why I ask every, you know, like, that's why I try to talk about it with all my guests. Yeah. I, yeah. And you know, I mean, it's it's hard if, if, if you like, I'll just say for myself that I've never been, had anxiety about things or something like that. I I, I mean, it's not to be, not to say cocky or something like that, but it's just, there's a fine line between confidence and cocky. Yeah. Absolutely. It's, it's just now, have I been to hell and been down into hell? Yeah. You know, I, I struggled, you mm-hmm. know, and, 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 but, uh, I never, you know, equated that with anxiety or I, I just, because my thing was, is, is, is if, if I believed what I was doing right, then it was okay. And, and, mm-hmm. and, and, and I'm talking about doing drugs. I'm talking about every, if it was stealing or whatever it's, it was. Yeah. As long as I believed in what I was doing was right, then, then I had no problem with it. And so, and, and that's, Man. that's how I <laughs> ran amok from 17 years old to 38 years old Yeah, is because, you know, I, I you know, I, Do you I think I, it helped you transition. Like when you came out of the dark side, like that almost seems like a healthier, it's like rather than justification. Well, cause I thought about this too, the other day, I, like I was justifying something that I had done in my own head. And I'm like, it just clicked. It's like, dude, if you have to justify anything, <laughs> it's probably bad. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah. if yeah. I have to yeah. find a reason to convince myself, yeah, yeah, I'm like, yeah, I yeah. probably shouldn't be doing yeah. this bullshit. Yeah. yeah. Um, but it almost seems like in that one, you know, because me, I was just beating my fucking brains into the ground out day after fucking day after day, or every time mm-hmm. I fuck up. And then it almost seemed like the transition coming out of it. Yeah. I mean, as, as you guys probably know, there's the, you get we get we put ourselves, especially. I mean, I can only speak for men. Yeah. We put ourselves in these positions where oh, we're yeah. like, oh, shit, I might not get out of this. Yeah. yeah. You know? And, yeah. uh, oh, God, please. Just this he time. He got me again. out. Yeah. Help me. Help yeah. me. Yeah. yeah. Help sure. me. Help me. Sure. You know? He didn't give me a fucking choice, man. Yeah. He, uh, fucking side of a fucking dirt road. Just, I, <laughs> I left a friend's party. I had a fucking full bottle of whiskey in my fucking stomach and, you know, and snorted my way through yeah. a party and, I went to the most dangerous road in town and turned Kid Rock up, and I fucking floored it, buddy. <laughs> it's like I, I wasn't trying to kill myself, but I damn sure didn't give a fuck. Didn't yeah. care if you did. I've been there. Yeah, yeah. And, and uh, I knew exactly that was uh, what you did when you called me. Of course. Uh, but, but, no, God visited me that night, no doubt about it. My brother, shout out Matt, um, he hadn't answered my phone call in two years. Mm-hmm. We, we grew apart for a short period. Three o'clock in the morning, I call him. I didn't even get the sentence out. He's like, I'm putting my pants on. He's Grab like, my car out. trailer and went yeah, to get him. Yeah. away. Yeah. And uh, it actually it didn't work out that way. This part's kind of funny. He shows up with a car trailer. I'm fucking out in this truck. It's bad. Hammered. And Oh, yeah. To the to the worst degree. Yeah. And uh, my, my wheel's just sideways. But I'm like, Matt, let's hook it up. We're going to drag it on. He try to drag it on. The wheel falls off. I'm like, well, fuck The wheel, it. all the fronts is bound. <laughs> I'm talking AR like, like, still attached. <laughs> Leave the fucking truck. Oh, let's go. Man. Yep. Um, but the reason I, I, I have a feeling I know it was God talking is because 10 seconds, 10 fucking seconds down the road around the next bend, sheriff. Here comes the sheriff. You know, passed by us. Nothing came of it. And never turned around to go get them either. And I nope, guarantee you that deputy knew what you guys were oh, doing they were with that empty door. car they, trailer. They were at my door the next morning. Yeah. They were just like, I told them, like, yep, deer jumped out in front of my truck. Oh. So, and I just, I had no choice. I'm, at that point, you know, I, that's when I'm doing the anxiety pace. Yeah. I'm like, and it just clicked. I'm like, that if, if that's not God going, hey, 
I'll get you out of this one, but you're on your fucking own from here. Right, right. Kind of thing, and, and that's when I Now it's just the first time, <clears throat> maybe. Yeah. You know, because, I mean, that usually happens a lot. Oh, no, he, many times. he talks, oh, he talks, I, I he talks to me coincidences right. all the right. time. Like, big fucking coincidence. That's what I call it. Like, that's yeah. God's language. Yeah. You know? I'll tell you what, man. I, I think anybody in this room will probably agree with me, but in throughout our lives, it comes these dark times or, you know, comes in and out. Everybody questions their faith at some point. I know I have many a times. I mean, it was the first time I was mad at God or started even like, no, it was aliens. There is no real God and all this and just kind of went off the rails for a long time. And until I got back in touch with my spiritual self and started talking to God again and praying, my life was a mess. Me and it, it's been, I mean, he's helped me out a lot now. I'm still going through a lot of struggles in life and whatnot, but life. Um, <laughs> it is life. Yeah, right. It yeah. is life. Exactly. <laughs> But I, you know, I feel like God speaks to me one way or another. Two weeks ago at the championship, I was so stressed out. I mean, just stressed beyond. And it was weird because I hadn't really yeah, been that stressed. Conspiracy theory but like I was, I think I told you this story the other night, but yeah, yeah. if everybody had showed up at the races at that final that said they were coming, I would have had probably 20 people there. Mm -hmm. And I just was losing my mind all day Friday, just <laughs> stressing out that I'm going to lose this race. Yeah. And... Then I fell, finally got, I slept maybe two hours that night. And then I crash, had a dream. You crash in the first mode. Yep. Yeah, I, I had a dream yeah. I'm going to crash out of this freaking race. Well, I the very it. first moto, I'm still a mess. I'm, I forgot my chest protector and everything. And I'm like, oh, my gosh. And Debbie's like, I'll run back to the your mother. Mm -hmm. I was like, the camper's a quarter mile that way. Charlie takes his, his jacket, protective gear. He's like, here, grab this. So I'm like, oh, okay. And what happens? I wiped out and I ate it pretty damn good. I ate shit. And when I'm sliding down the back of the hill, I'm just going into the fetal position waiting because I had a pretty good lead on those guys. And I knew there was six more guys coming over that jump behind me. I saw the so video. I'm balled up and I'm thinking, Oh God, here we go. This is going to hurt. And they all go by me and I'm like, wow. And I jump up and this piece came upon me. Like I haven't, I don't, I don't think I've ever felt more peace like that. And I just, it's like God going, I was like, but did you wow. Die? It's like he smacked me and said, but did, yeah, but, but now, now shut up, quit your freaking beating yourself up, quit worrying about it and just go out there and do your thing, man. Oh, I've been saying it for a minute. And I was God's so at peace and confident. Anxiety God, was God, gone. Sure. What's that? Sense I said of humor? God's got a killer sense of humor. I, I, yeah, I think he does. Yeah. And he's got his way of uh, making you pay for things too. Like, oh God. Yeah. No, it's, it's. <laughs> you know, I like what, what you're saying, you know, is in regards to kind of what happened with you and stuff. And, you know, and I, with, I'm curious with Tom and I, and I, Rick's told me a little and, and it's, this is, this is in a sense, not more towards Tom, but, um, with, since we're talking about BMX as well mm -hmm. and how it kind of started, you know, with, when we were young, like you said, we were riding and just doing our thing and enjoying, like we were kids. That's yeah. what, that's. I wish our kids today could have that experience of no phones. And you yeah, were in the epic age. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. The epic age. Yeah. It, the, yes, and I, and I'll say, I, I, you know, the biggest saying that I hear now is that we are living in the most, the, the biggest time of our lives in, in any generation, anything that's going on right now, 2023, 2024, what we're going to be experiencing in the next election coming up and all mm -hmm. this the whole thing that's going on is the most important time and then i go back to the 80s and i think of the 80s and the music and punk rock and just the whole era of that and like say california or whatever or just wherever it was yeah that that time uh what came out of the 80s i mean is 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 is, is awesome but where we when at 15 years old when i got in it was got was really heavily into racing traveling and doing these things uh, you know just beyond my wildest dreams you know i end up at a national race with our teammates and the teammate has the bag of cocaine from the other team manager from the other big team because they bet they had a bet they had a bet and the pro that was on the team the bet, fucking 80s man. you know had, had had this bet and so he won the bet and the bet was he got a big bag of coke and so he came back to the room Checks and out. 
And, and it's like, okay, Hey, you've done this before, right? Charlie. Yeah, I have, you know, now I, 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 I'd never done cocaine and I never, I, I may have, maybe I smoked pot, but it was, that was that introduction. Yeah. That's when it was a moment like, oh, yeah, fuck it. Yeah. Yep. And, and then that was the fuck. introduction. And then maybe like two months <clears throat> later, I came to a race here in Florida. Okay. My other teammate that was from Florida here that lived in Fort Lauderdale, don't need to really say his name, but came into, came into his, his, he was, I stayed with him cause it was spring break. I go into his apartment where he was staying with, he shared with another guy. And there's two kilos of coke on the on the, on the you coffee guys were table. Ballers, man. No, it wasn't me, but <laughs> I, know what I, said. <laughs> I see an ounce, and I'm like, "Whoa!" Lived with this guy that took this stuff off yeah. the boat. So yeah. these are guys you were talking about that were getting paid by their sponsors, huh? <laughs> <laughs> I was getting paid. No, they're doing that. a kilo of blow. Of course, they're winning everything, I'm man. Paid. I'm getting paid. To, but but then this it started. I can this, imagine racing on this cocaine. Was I got this, 80s, baby. And and this was the '80s. It's like the cocaine. Cowboy days. Yeah. Barry yep. Seal, baby. And, and this was this was part of the BMX community. I hate to say, yeah. there, I mean, there was there was the pros. There was the pros that were doing that, mm -hmm. and then there was then there was the other guys that weren't doing it. And I think they all kind of got you know still got along okay, but they they knew who who kind of stay away from or yeah. something. Yeah. But but it just started this. It started where. You know, it started this obsession, you know, and I and, agree with that because back in the 80s, it was nothing to walk into any party. I mean, right. no yeah. matter where you were and if someone's doing blow on the table in the living room, it was nothing. It was it, acceptable. It's, it's, you know, they were doing it in well, from, nightclubs in the yeah, 80s. You know what I, I mean? I've seen in red. It was like everybody from poor to politicians. Yeah. Like, yeah. The United States was just, I mean, we made the cartel so much money in mm -hmm. cocaine. It was, it was the thing to do. Mm -hmm. It was just. I heard I heard recently that Pablo Escobar has his own racing team, not BMX, but road bike. <laughs> right. I know, right? But he did his own riding. Yeah, like down in yeah, yeah, but, South I mean, America. I like, fully believe. I, I mean, yeah. he probably has. I has, bet they won a lot, too. <laughs> well, actually, I heard the Columbia, like side note, like I heard Columbia's got a hippopotamus problem now, thanks to that dude. Oh, really? oh, because he, he had, had he hippos had on his pets. property, and yes. when they stormed his right. shit, yeah. I did they just that. kicked the hippos right. out into right. Colombia. Right. So now they just got a bunch of fucking hippos <laughs> yeah. fucking randomly running around. Yeah. And they are a very aggressive uh, animal. They kill a lot of people. So, every year. so the the one thing what I was kind of getting yeah, at no, with absolutely. this it, it, is the fact of you know, hey, you you start off as 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 this you know, well, let's say naive or innocent kid, and now now you've kind of you stepped into this new world, and for for me, for racing, it kept, you know, it's it started that obsession, you know, and then it, I'm 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 traveling and, and on national team, you know, I'm living the rock star just li life, just living exactly, yeah, and mm -hmm. that it, that kept going, and I kept doing okay, and I kept winning, and I kept continuing on that lifestyle now on my own in Los Angeles. Now it's just as a 16 year old kid, hey, Jesus. hey, you know, can I do this? And that kept going till 16, 17, mm -hmm. you know, and then by 17, 17 slash 18, I'm, I'm, I'm almost throwing races because I want to go party. Yeah. I'm traveling. I'm I going. gotta get another line in me, well, man. Or, 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 Let I'm me just Vegas crash out now. Oh, I didn't yeah. make my, I didn't make yeah. my main. Now it's 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 this thing. And, and, and you always got some bullshit story too. And, and, yeah. I've known that. Like, well, not even bullshit story. Hey, you oh, crash, me, you crash in your race, was. and you crash in your race, and you don't qualify. Oh, then, so you're still going to the race. Yeah, you're, oh, I'm going. Oh, the, oh, I was going. Yeah. I was the guy that'd be like, oh, I can't make it. This, uh, not with racing. No, you go there to party. Yeah, you, oh, okay. you go. You, That's why you show up. up. You, you go. The homeboy's yeah, going to be there I'll, with that I'll kilo. It out. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever it is, it, yeah, but yeah. and that's that's kind of where my, you know, I'm I'm riding this 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 train up high, you know, and then for me, it, I gra graduated high school in 1984. I turned pro, and it and that was June, and then so September I go to the Grand Nationals, which is the final race of the year, and and as a pro which is i think my third or second third pro race and i get second i'm like st stoked and made yeah. 1200 bucks or something wow. and <laughs> the sponsor says um i can't i don't have enough money anymore to pay you your salary mm. so i'm gonna have to let you go and so now i'm like i'm 18 
I have no sponsor, no money coming in. And I was like, but now I'm a, now I'm a drug addict. Yeah, now you're now I'm a drug addict, you know, and I've got other priorities. And so now it was, it was, it was, it was a rude awakening. And, and I can imagine that smack in the face. I, I had to, I had to, I had to go look for a job. I looked for a job and went to a job interview. I got in a car accident. I lost my license. So in all in three months, it was from it was a three month period. Well, Rockstar well, from where, where, where yeah, I graduated, no, yeah, high, yeah, yeah, school, yeah, yeah, graduated high school, graduated high school, and then in September, race. it's September that yeah. that that was my last race, mm. and then October, I, I've I've crashed my, my vehicle, and now yeah. I've lost the license, and it's like, it was like, oh shit, what do I do? Yeah, you know, and and uh, and. Just, just to quick get through this, no, you know, this I, 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 you know, I didn't know what to do. So what did I do? I, I said, I'll join the Marine Corps. Well, I, I, I signed for up for the Marine Corps and they came to get me at my mom's place. And I stood there behind the door and I'm like, I'm not going, you know, I, I signed <laughs> up. I did all this shit. They came and I'm like, you know what? I changed my mind. Changed Imagine my this mind. conversation. Well, that's and, too bad, yeah. sir. So the Marines are like, yeah. You're yeah. coming with yeah. us. Yeah. And, and so, you know. I continued on that spiral downhill, you know, from 18 to 21. And then I did join, you know, and then I'll just kind of leave it at there for now. But I mean, just, you know, with, with BMX, you know, everybody's got, you know, their, their kind of story. And, and I think, you know, you know, uh, I'd love to hear Rick's and Tom's, you know, experience of, of that era, because we were, we were, that was our life, right? Bike riding. It went at, in, riding bikes, yeah, absolutely. And then, so where did it go from 15, whether to 18 to 18 to 21, you know? And, yeah. and, and so, yeah. My situation was a little different than that. I mean, like I said, I was, like I told you last time I was here, man, I was always a great novice, a very yeah. dominant novice. Mm -hmm. And my last race in novice back in the day was 1983 grand nationals and i ended up third in the grands and i ended up oh, third overall in, MPSA, yeah, in, right. in mpsa right, right, right. right i was actually national number three in my age group for uh but npsa also did proficiency national numbers like now no more now it's if you're national number one you're an expert Either that or you're the greatest intermediate that ever came along. Yeah, so. but, the, but, but nevertheless, <laughs> said, nevertheless the love of bikes, the love of the right. lifestyle, yeah. it's still there. Absolutely, yeah. You know, and, like, and it yeah. never went away for me. Yeah. And even, even when the boys were growing up and when you came into my life, I thought about BMX a lot. But at that point, I was freaking never, breaking my balls just to, to put food guys. on the table from you guys, yeah. you know? Um, Thank you, brother. I couldn't afford a freaking. I couldn't afford a two thousand dollar bike for you guys, and then because I knew if I bought you, and then now I got to buy four of them because uh, all three of you. And I know I'm not going to sit at home and or sit out and watch you race. I tried to do that with Jackson when he started yeah. ten months ago, and about four races in, you know, here I am. So, but that's the best part about this guy, is the very first time we went to the track, I'm. You know, watching Jackson and wandering around. And I think what, what got his attention was I wore an old school red line shirt similar to this one. But this was an original old school red line right. shirt. So Tom came up and introduced himself to me. He's like, hey, man, I like your shirt. That's cool. I said, yeah, that's, that's from way back in the day. And we just started a conversation. I had no idea who I was talking to. And it was just <laughs> another guy from the local track. And he's uh, yeah, he's right, still just yeah, another yeah, guy. Good, you right? know, the yeah, fact that yeah. he's... A, a BMX God to me, you know, that's <laughs> I somewhat starstruck when I met this guy. And like I told your mother today, I says, you know, the more I get to know Charlie, the more I get to know Charlie as just a friend of mine. And well, it's a yes, although I admire everything he's capable of and able to do, you know, I also have some envy as far as, you know, the whole training thing. And that's the God given natural talent that this man was blessed with. Yeah, you know? I mean, but, Me, uh, I'd have to go out and train for the no next five years. No slouch either, either but yeah. I got to put an awful lot into oh, yeah, it. Yeah. And I still got a lot of work to do after 10 months. This is going to be a very rude awakening this year. Hopefully I'll turn that around and, uh, you know, maybe I'll start winning some races here in intermediate Mon class. But, well, hey, I raced my first official Mon intermediate the other night against an intermediate, yeah. and I beat the guy. So yeah, nice. That's yeah. what I've learned. I mean, again, I'm not a BMXer, but it's like I'm on this path to, to personal health right. so I can really push myself. And it's like I'm running, and I fucking hate yep. running. So, and it's, it's I'm at this point Maybe where you I'm, should try BMX because I love doing BMX it. BMX is 
running and BMX and uh, there's nothing about hating so far apart. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. The, yeah. the point being that it's just like as long as you're, it, it just I and mean, all things I think as long as you just keep going. I just you don't have to go. fucking win all the time. You don't have to like, sprint all the time. You know? Do you run? No, just only if the cops are chasing me. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, they never caught oh, me. I got the fucking scars to prove that one. <laughs> <laughs> They've never caught me when we, when we were young. When I was on a BMX bike, they chased me many a time yeah, to New I Smyrna. Always, I never, got never could they catch running. me. It was always the dumb shit. Yeah. But, yeah. Uh, anyway, sorry. Like Porta John shit and stuff like that. I was doing the right thing. We're yeah. <laughs> so we're at a baseball oh, I game. We I guess we're going to talk about it. Yeah, we're at a baseball <laughs> game. No, I'm going to tell the story. Now, how about the Even person though, that was there tells the fucking story at least? You want to tell the story? I will tell the story. I was there. I'm the one that had a, 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 a mom's looking for you, and I turn around, and the sheriff's standing there. I'm like, what the hell's going on? Yeah, but when so, the, okay, right, you, long story short, I got arrested for lighting Porta Pony on fire. <laughs> but, I wish I had flammable? pictures. <laughs> well, the toilet paper is. Okay. But then, my buddy Luke, he goes in there, just a couple of little dumb white trash pieces of shit. He goes in there, lights toilet paper on fire, and then I reach in and I slapped it out, or so I thought. Well, those Porta Potty doors are on springs. Right. So, whoosh. And then we go walking back, and then I look back, and the top of the f- is just glowing red right inside. And I'm like, oh, <laughs> shit. How so old? I go, uh, How? I was 12, 12 okay. 13, something like that. So I go hauling ass back because I got to put this fucking thing out. Well, this little rat bitch kid that was hanging around around us, he runs straight for fucking the group of people because he's mm-hmm. going to go rat me out. Yep. So I, I didn't know this at the time. So I go, I start putting the fucking fire out. It wasn't nothing too crazy, but it was like as soon as I opened the door, like, I, I like things are calm down. I turn around, there's just cops and firefighters everywhere. And I'm just, <laughs> I'm like, well, this is about as red handed as this gets. Yeah. Then the cop walked me in the middle of the, like, the whole town, the league. You like, smart to be sports kids, complex. All the moms, all I the just, they just finished redoing yeah, the here whole comes thing. A little skater kid with some cop. And he, everybody's just like, don't be mine, don't be mine. And I'm like, hey, mom. <laughs> <laughs> She slithered away without even telling me. Oh, yeah, no. She, and then I turn around. I'm like, where the hell did everybody go? She take me to fucking jail. Yeah, I know. She's yeah, like, oh, yeah, take his right. ass to jail. Yeah. I'm, I'm like, that would be my mom. Yeah, for no, sure. 100%. Oh, my mom. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, the worst it? part is the first yeah, time I was in cuffs. I'm going to kill him if I Yeah, that was, exactly. Yeah. It was the first time I was in cuffs, and I'll never forget it, because, like, it was God. It had to have been, because I got the biggest fucking rock or pebble in my eye. And I remember I'm in the back of the it. car, and I'm like trying to fucking tell the cops. I'm like, open the goddamn door. And my mom's like, fuck you. I'm like, mom. She's like, no, nope, take him to fucking jail. Oh, I'm so 12. Oh, yep. Yeah. Well, she didn't fuck. Well, mom, she, you know. Being the a, other kid was only about 10, mother, wasn't he? The way, she, the way we came up, okay. she had to put on such a warrior right. persona right. Uh, for so long. Even, in, even to this day, like, that has not left her. No, but she, <laughs> but she's had to. No, she's managed. It. I mean, my mom's the greatest woman. Nice. I've ever seen. She is a yeah. godsend to, for to me. To keep her and to keep her and I safe the way she did. She, I mean that that right. same animalistic like take him to fucking jail like. Uh, <laughs> that is, dude, that's yeah. I mean, I, that's. Anyways, you, let's yeah. Get, as we're far as your mom here. and that whole deal, when I met her, twenty two years ago. I was rock bottom, hooked on drugs, doing it all, and just sinking fast. Yet she still saw something in me. And she hated drugs, you know that, because, you know, her family, she had family members the same way. And, you know, I, she still got with me, and then y'all ended up moving down here. And, uh, you know, I, I tried real hard giving everything up and, of course, screwed up many, many times. And then that one day she got up and walked out and, finally gave me the ultimatum that I was always looking for. It's like, well, you know, nobody else wants me to quit. Why should I quit, you know? I, well, it's like, and I wanted to do it for myself. I just didn't have the willpower. So I was just begging and praying for somebody to come along and say, it's me or that. And that was your mom, obviously, because yeah. I had fallen in love with her. And she finally gave me the ultimatum. She says, I'm leaving. Mm-hmm. You're going to get shit together or I'm leaving. I told her just the other day because she was having, like, uh, she was going through some stuff. You know, we've been on this path to healing. And I told her that. I'm like, Mom, you realize, like, you're the glue. Oh, I was like, absolutely. Had you, had you not, I was like, Dad was putting you through holy hell when y'all got together. Mm-hmm. You chose to stick with it. Mm-hmm. You gave me a second chance at life. You gave me a father. Mm-hmm. You gave me brothers. And, you know, I was like, how could you ever talk bad about yourself? I'm like, yeah, you can be a bit harsh sometimes, but that's okay because now you can relax. Mm-hmm. We're good. We got nice. you. She won't. 
<laughs> she knows. She, she has. She's calmed down quite a bit. So but she'll uh, still damn sure tell you she'll speak her mind. All right, well, which, let's hit the pod button so you can get punched in the ear when she sees us. Yeah, I'm no, not. Everybody. I know. I'm not. Um, no, I'm, I'm actually real interested in hearing Tom's section. That's like, right. Me too, because none of us know this part yet. Yeah, so, all right, Tom, lay it on. What was the 15 to 20 year old run of BMX Tom? Well, I started when I was 13. And, 13? Yeah, I started racing when I was 13, and uh, I was not good at all. Like, I had friends that got me into it, but I, I was hooked. I loved it, you know? Yeah. Like, waiting for the magazine to come out every month or magazines because yep. there's, like, four or five different ones at the time. And, you know, a national had happened three months ago, but now I'm reading it like I'm reading it for the first time, you know? Mm -hmm. Not like today where it's you can watch it online live. And yeah. So, um, I mean – as a kid, I had, you know, Richie Anderson, the Patterson brothers, Stu Thompson, because that's what, you know, Stu yep. was like, the reason I got a red line, the first bike I got was a red line. Same here. Stu, you know? It was so, my first real race bike was yep. a red line, and I was a Stu fan and hooked for life. Yeah. Still, and, still to this day, I mean, yeah. he's the GOAT. How can you not be a Absolutely. Stu fan, you know? Absolutely. I agree. Um, but I, pictures of Charlie on my wall, man. Like, I remember when he got uh, the Terrible 10, and, and Terrible mm -hmm. 10, I'm like, I, I, I do remember, yes. Oh, that's kind of like the yeah, right? Ten. Seriously, right? Oh, man, yeah. There's a flag. So okay. blast from the I, past. I, I wanted to be one of those guys. I wanted to be yeah. one of the best one day in my life. And who knew it would take 56 years or whatever. You, know? but, <laughs> you, you said you went pro for a while. I did. Uh, I did. Yeah. When you were younger, though, right? Great, yeah. Right? Well, right. like 30. Life oh, okay. Life. Starting as a pro at 30? Yeah, that's when I turned Ooh, pro. So that's actually, hardcore right there. Yeah. But, I, you know, I raced, so I raced locally and I did some nationals and that sort of thing for a while. And then like in 86, I got into music, um, started learning how to play guitar, uh, started letting the hair grow, um, got got into a band, started a band and okay, cool. whatnot, and then uh, joined another band. And uh, they were pretty big at the time in our local area and were signed by a record label. So I played with them for a little while. Um, and then we actually got back together not that long ago, like 15 years ago, but um, they kind of just dismembered too. But anyway, I got into that whole style, lifestyle, we'll call it. Um, and I never got into drugs. It wasn't not my thing. Mm -hmm. I guess my mother beat that into my head that mm -hmm. I better never do them. Mm -hmm. um, go, go back. My dad passed when I was four years old. So my mom so brought me it. up. Right. So my mom was like mom and dad all in one, you know. So, yeah. you know, she she scared me. <laughs> yeah. She scared me going back to what we were talking about I before. But, yeah, she scared me. And uh, – so I don't want to disappoint her either, you know. So um, I got into the music and, like I said, grew my hair. And next, you know, it's the 80s. Mullet? Guys, no, no, no. I had, <laughs> yeah. I, I had, I, yeah. I, and it wasn't puffy. Like, that wasn't, <laughs> it wasn't nothing like that, you yeah. know. But, you know, the chicks dug it. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So for me, the girls were my drug. Mm -hmm. Sex was my drug. I yeah. It. Green so, and pink. Yeah, and that, still my drug. Yeah, <laughs> but watch I went. It. Watch it. <laughs> <laughs> but I went from 16 years old till I turned 21 when I got married, and oh. it was a it was fun for me to count how many girls I've been with. Yeah, it was it was like a, a challenge. Notch yeah. on the belt. Oh, Notch yeah. on the bed. Post, there you go. You know there I mean. you go. So, you know, 120 in a very short time was, you know. Decent number. About average. Yeah, you know. <laughs> so, um, no Gene Simmons numbers, yeah. but you know, that's not bad. I, I, I think you got me. So. But I, got, I started getting like, kind of tired of that, and then I met a girl and uh, got her pregnant. So we got married. She, she actually she got pregnant. She graduated high school. We got married, had a kid all in one year. Wow. Yeah. So, yeah, that was 1989. And uh, so all that happened, you know, I, I got. I told myself I want to change who I am. I don't want to be that guy I was before. And going back to where we started this thing with, I felt I could do that in my mind. You're like, all right, I'm going to do that. So, so how the heck did you stay away from the whole drug thing? Is is with the rock and roll lifestyle? I mean, drugs go hand I, I drank, in hand with it. I drank, drank, yeah. drinking. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I drank. Did that. Yeah. I didn't. I didn't touch drugs until after the divorce. I mean, I'd smoke. Yeah, I smoke pot once in yeah. a while, but I never bought it. Like, right. if our other guitarist had it, I'm like, yeah, I'll take a hit, whatever. You know, that's yeah, it. Okay. That's it. You know, I was never, and that that was like the dirty. And that was at 21. Like, was that still uh, that at That was probably that was probably 18, 19. No, no, uh -oh. you, were, you were saying when you were like, all right, there's, there's enough of this. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Like, so 20, 20, 20, 20, 21. Yeah, 20 years old when when I knew I was gonna have a kid. Yeah. Okay. Oh, I'm like, okay. okay. <laughs> that's I mean, nice. We haven't heard that perspective yet. You know, like I've heard. 
<laughs> I've heard a lot of perspectives, but never like, and you love to hear that, you know, yeah. especially in today's world where like marriages are falling apart, yeah, and no, shit's I, happening. So to hear like, you know, you got a kid coming, yep. you just met a girl, you gotta like, do the right thing. Where you're like, exactly, and just and just stick it out, even if, yeah. especially at fucking twenty one. I mean, and I she was, was eight, she was eighteen. Yeah. Dude, yeah, like yeah. that that relationship in today's world would still fall apart, man. You're yeah. still full of piss and vinegar. So I good thought, on you for like. I thought I was like the big dog in the family because I didn't have a kid till I was almost 25 years old. You know, my brother had three or four kids by the time he was 21, and uh, yeah, I was like, okay, I got my stuff together finally. I'm 25 years old, and Matt was born 24 days before my 25th birthday. Yeah. So or 25 days before November one, and, and Brian was born on the 17th day before his birthday. Nice. September 18th. Yep. So, I, you know, I, I tried to do that too. I was, I think I was 38. No, I was 34, full blown crackhead. No, no. And I uh, got this girl, thought that I got this girl pregnant and, and thought that, okay, if I have this child with her, this will That'll change me. It's going to change yeah. everything. Mm-hmm. And uh, had this, somehow had this healthy, beautiful girl. And it was the same thing for the next like three years. Yep. And, and that's what first got me to where, you know, I asked for help. Address the issue. You know, like, that's it, when you're because, like, because, oh. because is this child was born, you know, we moved out. I moved from LA out to San Diego mm-hmm. and, and I said, okay, we're going to we're gonna do what's, I did a lot of geographics in my, in my day, which is if in the program, they'll call it geographic. Oh. Like you, you just kind of, Change, change your environment. Change location. Okay. Change, change your environment. Setting, but okay. you're still taking yourself there, you know, which is the fucking problem. I've always you know? said it don't matter where you're so, at. <laughs> so, so all of a sudden now I'm in San Diego and now I'm, 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 I've got this newborn baby and I'm doing the same shit. Yeah, I'll go say, like, yeah. I feel like that has got that could have some validity if, like, when they say change geographics, it's like, all right, go from L.A. to, like, the middle of a small, you, you yeah, can still do it in the matter. backwoods. It, it does not matter. It don't matter okay. where it you go. Matter. When, when I, I, you're an addict or an alcoholic, yeah, you're going you to find, find it. Because yeah. there's bars in every yeah. town. You I've go heard to so many of my there. friends say, "Oh man, I got to get out of New Smyrna, man. This yeah. place is so well, no, bad." I just, like, I just, dude, I just, why don't you just get out of freaking, you know, the drug dealer's freaking apartment? You know, that's what you got to do. It's like what you told me. Show me your friends, and I'll show you your future. Bingo. Yep. Bingo. You know, like, yeah. I mean, if you do... Does that mean I'll be national champion next year? I don't know. Do you <laughs> put the work in? Yeah, you want to be a national champion champ or not? not don't, I'm gonna, if dude, you don't get it, it ain't uh, their fault. <laughs> you, are, you are absolutely That's correct, right. man. Tom has been hugely encouraging to me. Yeah. He's always given me you know, I believe you will. little bits yeah. of advice here and there. Yes. And I believe some of the advice between him and Patrick that they gave me just on, on the you know, rhythm sections helped me win that, that, that final. Because yeah. uh, like Leslie told me, Freaking big Mike was coming, man, in there. <laughs> Had I not got through those those whoops feeling confident, I wouldn't have won that final. So Is that the same guy that had your head shook on the one? Had me what? Your head shook on the the, the first first race of the state series. Um Oops. when you two well you two you kinda collided on the one turn and I ended up calling you at the end of the day and you had you had a good day. Oh, the uh, very first time the, in yeah, St. The, Augustine. Yes. Yes. That was that the was same, the, same guy you That's the guy that got with? my head. Yeah. Bec- well, no, that was different. He different. didn't get in your head. You got in your head. I got my own head because I got out of shape coming but out I, of that I, last, I, coming I out mean, of the whoops. I had never been more proud of you than, than I'd ever seen. Nice. Dude. Cool. Because, like, he was, he's full on in his head. And I feel like this, you know, on my path to recovery, a big thing I did was those, these videos that we listened to in the beginning. Right. Uh, on my drive in, I just listen to them fucking things on a right. loop for like an hour till I'm crying yep. and I'm fucking screaming. I'm yep. just letting that shit out, you know? <laughs> so, well, see, uh, that's, yeah, Saturday was the day before I met him. Mm-hmm. I actually met him later that day. But... Yeah. I just remember telling you, like, you, I, I, I saw all of the anxieties and everything that I was facing in your head. You know, well, everything yeah. you were talking about was like, oh, I'm going to do well, this, happen, was, this happen, this happen, this happen. And I was like, fuck Same thing that shit, I struggle Pop. with, man. I was like, get some rest. I knew I blew it, and I was beating myself up over it. Do you remember what I told you, though? It's my favorite line when uh, I just told him, I'm like, remember, Bob, real lions like to hunt. Mm-hmm. And you got a whole nother day of hunting tomorrow, so mm-hmm. let's get it. And yeah. then I was, dude. And then to, to, to hear that you just went out there and just ate him was up. Was it Sunday that I met yeah. you? Because the very oh, first yeah, race, yeah, yeah, you came to watch me. Because you were like... After, okay, 
So let, let me first ask you this. How the hell did this happen? Because Tony comes up to me. Right. I don't remember if it was on Saturday or if it was Sunday morning, but he comes up to me. He's like, hey, man, Charlie Williams wants to meet you. And I almost fell down. I'm like, what? <laughs> Charlie Williams wants to meet me? He's like, yeah, dude, I've been over there talking to him for a while. He wants to meet you. I'm like, I didn't really believe him at first. Yeah. So when we came over to the 0910, I see Charlie sitting over there, and he looks up, and he saw me, and then looked and saw that I was with Tony, and dude, this big smile, jumps up, comes over to me, big shakes my hand, I mean, like we've been buddies for 20 years, and I was just completely blown away. I'm like, here's this rock star that I've idolized for the last, you know, or at least back then, treating me like I'm a good buddy of his, you know? It was just, it was really kind of mind-blowing to me. And then, even more so than that was, he asked me what Moto was mine. So I said, oh, I'm Moto 68 or whatever it was. And he was Moto 125. I said, I'm going to come watch you race. And I'm like, yeah, okay, whatever. And I, I really didn't expect anything. But not only did he come watch me race that day, but he was the first person standing there at the finish line when I won my main to congratulate me. <laughs> I was blown away, man. But it's... it's it's so poetic that you explain it like this. And, and I'm starting to notice it, you know, being in the podcast space and being in the entertainment world is like, sometimes we see these people as more than people. You know, yeah, like you sure. were, obvi you were obviously sure. rock, like rock starring it out. And, uh. and, <laughs> no, I mean, you are, yeah. yeah, but it's like, it's just a BMX bro. At it's the just end of the a, day, it's just a dude, yeah, you know, same heart as same heart as anybody yeah. next to you. And he saw your stoke and he just riding that wave with you, man. That's yeah. beautiful. It's, it's just, a, it's the family. Now it's just, a, it's, a, it's a part of, you know, I, I really, I am really enjoying or just, you know, blessed that we landed here in Florida. You know, at this time, at this age, with what's going on with my family, my kids, because it's just changed my perspective and dynamic on life. Boom. You know, and it's where, you know, live, living in L.A. Spin that mic towards, oh, towards sorry, you. Yeah. There you go. But li living, in, li living in L.A. my whole life, being just, you know, my ups and downs, you know, and all that stuff. And just kind of maybe I was stale. I mean, I left a, a thriving business. I left it all to for my kids to come out here. For you. But then to come out here and, and, and truly the people, whether it's Florida, East Coast, are genuine people, yeah. you know. Amen. There, there's not the the the. I don't even, I don't want to call it racism, but there's just not the animosity of of you know with with different cultures out here. No. It, it's just it's. We learned a long yeah, time ago. Yeah, I tell people, yeah. we learned at a young age. You gotta get along to go along, man. Mm -hmm. yeah. Like an asshole is an asshole down here, and we just steer clear of it. Right, mm -hmm. right, yeah. right, for sure. And yeah. and so that that's just kind of you know. Um, Anybody nowadays that, that I see, you know, and, and it's, you know, getting to know Tom and, and just, you know, knowing his personality and his dynamics, I, I, I love his ferocity as far as riding and training and, and enthusiasm and, 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 you know, character in, in, in both on and off the track. And then, and then the same with getting to know Rick and Deb and, and just, um, it's just that that it's the connection of people that that's what I that's what I'm looking for. Amen. And, you know, Amen. yeah. And uh, I think I enjoy that part yeah. of it as almost as much as the riding and the, and the yeah. racing and the competition, you know, yeah, I just absolutely love going to the track and walking around that video and, of Brad Pitt where he's like, you know, I don't know if it's, you know, the journey or the destination. He's like, but I do know. The one thing that matters most is the people that we hitch ourselves to along the way, mm -hmm. and the indelible mark that they leave upon our very souls. Sure, you know, yeah. and, and I I couldn't agree with that more. Like you got to learn to enjoy the process. Yeah. You got to not worry about a destination because who cares about where? Like who cares about the fucking finish line? I know. I mean, I know you guys really care about the finish line, but, <laughs> but in life, in yeah. life, I just mean you know what I mean. Yeah. But yeah, I I love what you're saying because it, and it translates so deeply across life yeah for sure well, and, and i with you with your you know newfound i don't want to say newfound but but as far as what you're doing mm. in the 
podcast. Oh, it's very new. You know, and and He's a little that personal excellence. I mean, that fits with me now because it's 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 really. I mean, I'll just say that where I've become wanting this personal excellence is through Andy Frisella. And I don't know if you're familiar with that I, name. I'm sure if I saw him, I would. Okay. The name but, doesn't ring okay, a Okay, but, but he, he, he's, 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 his podcast down stuff is huge. And, okay. And he's got a program called 75 Hard. But everything... I know that. Okay. Everything yeah. about him is personal excellence. Yep. You know, lifting somebody else up. You know, pushing them and everyone around you to be the best. And it just how you introduced kind of where you're where you're at nowadays mm -hmm. that's 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 it man that's where that's where if everybody could be on that path now i will, I will say this you know? the, i i yes i'm tr i've been force feeding my mind to have these this knowledge but uh, i heard something on the tv show the chosen the other day um and it was a it was a scene where jesus was performing a miracle and during one of his sermons, he said, wisdom without action is absolutely nothing. And that one's just been ringing in my head. Faith That's why without I, works is dead. Boom. That's know? why I'm running every right. day. Like in just today, like I, right. I'm a service mechanic. So I'm driving around and I ended up pulling up, pulling in and getting fast food because I was just feeling lazy, feeling convenient. And when I got <laughs> How done, that make you feel horrible, yeah. Fucking, yeah. even like up in my mind. Yeah. And then I, it took like an hour of, you know, breathing, listening to the right things, right. the right book. And then I got here before y'all got here. I got in the steam sauna and the ice bath. Wow. And I'm like, all right, here we go. I'm back. <laughs> like, nice. but I like to think of it like a, like a, a jigsaw puzzle that I've been working on. And then now it's that like, all right. your life? Is well, it it's, it's like, no, it's all the skills we learn. Okay. Like, it's like, we know what to fucking do. We know what to eat. We know what to not to do. Yeah. And each one's a piece. And we're just like it's holding the piece and we're looking at it. it. But it's like, at this point, it's like, all right, motherfucker, just put the pieces together and hang it on the wall and forget about it. Because this is you now. You know? It's yeah, like, it's, it's stop mm -hmm. waiting to finish the puzzle and just do it. I, I've been there, Kyle. So, like, I've been driving, you know, I try to eat clean as much as possible. My wife, Stephanie, she she helps me a, a real lot. But, you know, to get to that point where, you know, like, all right, I missed lunch. It's now 2 o'clock. Your blood sugar is going like, all right. There's a Taco Bell. Let's yeah. go there. Let's just do it. You know, like, mm -hmm. you know, and, and for me, nobody will know. Yeah, nobody will know. No, no. So, but you'll know later yeah, on. Yeah. Toilet later. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> It'll know. Yeah. So yeah, I've been down that road, and, and it's funny because like it's it's like yeah, who cares? Like you get to that yeah, mindset. Yeah. Oh. Like who cares? I'm just gonna do it. Yeah. Like you know, I know I'm training. I know I, I shouldn't do this, but. I, I don't know any other place to go to. Like when there's probably, if you look in your phone, which you, you always do, I can find a place. Oh yeah. You know what I'm saying? So it's again, making that decision, conscious effort, conscious effort yeah. to do the right thing. Just, yeah, yeah, just handle it. Do the Spike Lee thing, you know, do the right thing. Yeah, you know, my big thing That's is always like been my motto cooking. For, I'm a good cook and I love years. cooking. Like, I don't know why the fuck. And I can, that's always the healthy option. Yeah, absolutely. And it's cheaper too. hundred By like 100%. light years. <laughs> So what what started you on that transformation? Hey, this is uh, mentally, this is, goes all the way back to like twenty years old. I mean, okay. honestly, this could may go back to my childhood. You know, I've I used to call myself Kirsten's birth my whole life. It just you know just the way I came oh, up. Oh, curse, cursed since birth. Okay, you know, the way, since the way I came birth. up. Okay, you know, I'm luckily like, I had I a her. luckily I had some good <laughs> I had some good people at a young age. You know, shout out Charlene and Scotty. Faith, Amanda, Amazing. you know, like, like some family that they weren't all there all the time, but I had love mm -hmm. and that's all I had for a long time. Sure. Um, and then my thank you know, my mother, she was my rock, but yeah, I, I always considered okay. I was cursed since birth. So uh -huh. it's, it's always been in my head, you know, like, how do I be better? How do I be better? Why, 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 why? Um, and it was, uh, actually it was after a breakup. The first one that really stung, mm -hmm. right? I think I was 22, 23, really fucked me up mentally. Where I was like, I started listening to those uh, motivational speeches on YouTube. At that, at that age. That's when oh, I started yeah. wondering. I didn't realize how deep it was going to go. Into like how, you know, depending on how, how what you're going through, that, that journey can be. Now, again, I was kind of just being a little bitch for a long time. I was putting it in my head, but not putting it to practice. All right. and, and it wasn't until, shit, 
two years ago when my mentor, Adam Lowry, saw what was happening to me with my addiction and, and the partying and everything else. Where he's like, you're fucking spiraling, bro. And so, something about him outwardly showing me that love. Like, he saw something I didn't see right. where I was like, it was still a long journey from there. <laughs> and there were still a lot of wild-ass <laughs> nights. But but that I think that was, the, okay. that was the seed that got planted to one day give me hope. And then, you know, you know getting back into God, that was... I think that was the nail that put I put the nail in that coffin and kicked it down the river when I me and God started getting to know each other. Amen. Yeah. I was certain certainly glad to when you joined up with our church and everything and convinced me to go. I was you know, I was very apprehensive about going. And just for whatever reason I hadn't been in a church or been to a church sermon in I never thought you guys years. were gonna come, but it's but amazing. I'm so glad I went. Our family's I mean, getting closer together. Yeah. Not because yeah. we like go to church, but like the whole it's it's weird. I don't know if that you like well, you've seen that effect in y'all's families, like you're getting more spiritual or connected or whatever you do. But that's why I, I you know you, we we had started because I've got I've got fifteen year old twins, boy girl, and then I got a soon to be seventeen year old. Mm. You know, and and Man, the, the blessing of that <laughs> coming, coming from yeah. California okay. and Makes everything. Sense. And that's why I came here was for, for better education, the stuff that they were starting to go through with all the COVID stuff oh, yeah. in California. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it, it was bad. So it was just, you know, a lot of things aligned, you know, and, and, and God blessed us that we, you know, we had this, we bought this cheap fixer up house, you know, in 2019 and, and, for so, and we wanted to, uh, I had this, uh, you know, I was going to do a big two story to fit our big family. And, and because we were in this two bedroom, uh, two bath house mm -hmm. that had some illegal additions on it, but it was a thousand square feet in, in family of five. And, uh, and so, hey, we're going to do this addition. Two and a half years later, it took to get permits, oh, I believe which it. was now January of 22. And with all been going through that COVID, I'm like, I don't want to spend the money now because what it was going to cost in nineteen and nineteen or twenty was no, was triple. It was four hundred thousand. Was yeah. going to be like six hundred thousand. Yeah. Put an addition on the house, yeah. and we sold we sold that Cracker Jack box house <laughs> for a million two hundred and fifty thousand dollars. I just felt like that was like yeah. a where, where, like, where was it located? In Burbank. Burbank. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah, so yeah. where the studios are. I mean, yeah, they, yeah. you know. Yeah. So sold that and then was able, you know, and and got, you know. And was able to move here and, yeah, and, 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 and buy the right size house for you guys. Buy the right over. size yeah. house in the right county with yep. the great school districts yeah. and all that stuff. Yeah, you can definitely get some good yeah. Florida property for that. Where exactly yeah. do you live? And what, St. John's. St. John's. Oh, St. Nah, John's. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know why, but I kept thinking Jacksonville for some reason. So, I mean, it, but, you know, so there was a, just a, a lot of things that aligned then. And, and I, you know. Um, can you believe that, you know, thinking back, I think I do this all the time. Can you believe, like, with everything you've told us personally and the yeah. listeners personally about where you may have been mentally to, like, think yeah. not all that far in the future, you know, me and my family are going to be well, buying a dream house. In you, well, you, you know what? It's it's because you say this, and I just, I like to share 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 this stuff is, I is love you know, that. because, like I mentioned, so, so when I quit in 84, mm -hmm. you know, racing, you know, that's, that started my spiral down downhill, and so I had a, you know I had a series of events, you know, and that one was going to the Marine Corps, mm -hmm. you know, at 21, you know, and getting kicked out other than honorably, at at 23, you know, mm -hmm. for for drug use and 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 alcohol abuse or use and and a wall and a few things, you know, that that go with that, and then mm -hmm. so but that wasn't bad enough, you know, and then you continue on that path and. So that had to been like 92 or well, 90, 94, 93, I got my first DUI. No, no, that, well, my first DUI was in the Marine Corps or in the military. The second DUI was, was one, um, in, uh, in 93. So then what happened is I lost my license, mm -hmm. but I still drove, but that got me back to riding bikes. So I was, what, 28 years old, I think. 28, 26, so... Yeah, 20, 94 tw about that. Yeah, so, yeah, 94. So, yeah, 94. So then I was 28 years old. My, I had this bright idea. I'm going to start racing bikes again. You know, BMX is in the blood. 
Dude. You know, hey, it's been 10 years since I raced. You can and, handle it now. Uh, now, I, now I can handle it, but yet I'm, you know, a drug addict, full blown yeah, yeah, that's what coke I mean. head yeah. And, yeah. And, yeah. and stuff. But hey, I'm going to, I'm going to race bikes again. Well, I raced pro when I quit. So now there's a vet, veteran pro class. Okay. So cool. now I'll, I'll go back and I'll race vet pro class. So three months later, after I just picked up a bike and I decided to go race the first national of the year as a vet pro, I break my neck. Oh, jeez. You know. God. So, so first lap, first moto over the bars, head first <coughs> into a, a double jump, and I break my neck. Ooh. And and that Jesus, Charlie. Yeah. So, <laughs> but but it but it was you know, and that was the thing. It was. Okay, I was in a halo for seven months. You know, wow. at, when I got out of the halo, I'm like, I want to race again. And so I, I wanted to come back respect, racing. Respect. Let's not forget about drinking or using. Yeah. That's part yeah. of me. That's my life. But I'm going to come back and ride. And so then I went back to that first race again where I broke my neck the year later. I cr my grip came off the bar into the first turn. I crashed. I tear up the side of my face. And I'm like... I didn't break anything, so <laughs> let's go. Yeah. And right. and that ne next year in '95, I raced drinking and using, and got number one in my in my class, the cruiser class that year. Because so so I was like, okay, you know what? This see, I proved I proved my point. I could do this, and that was kind of that was the unfortunate part of drinking and using and that was my attitude as long as i believe in what i'm doing is right yeah i get that you can you can get through it yeah oh yeah i was on the surface yeah. i was still a full-fledged elevator man paying my bills just sold my house i had a whole bunch of money like on the surface nobody knew what was wrong okay nobody okay like i'm the only one i was going to that i'm like hey guys i think there's a problem They're like nah dude your bills are paid you're good i'm like yeah but my weekends are Fucking insane, y'all! Like, like <laughs> I always right. do. Having a thirty-year-old kid puts a hundred grand in the bank, free and clear. I'm like, oh shit! Here we go. Well, no, it's not. The, it's not. No, and it's that's. It's not the thirty-year-old with a hundred grand. It's it's the thirty-year-old in the mental state. That right. You're in the mental right. state that you were in, because yeah. I knew you were in that mental state. Is what I was saying. Because, yeah. trust me, I've seen it. No, I know. I've I lived know. it. Yeah. So I mean, but you're but thirty now, years old. I mean, I'm. I was. I, 31 yeah yep you know that that's where it's just you know what it's it's and i think people need to be careful with that one it, yeah and, and and you know what it, it and and it's just it's crazy because you just mentioned about like about where how i got here yeah you know and there was still that a lot of mm -hmm. a lot of life you know um going on and, and it's it's uh you know how do we make it you know how, how do we how do we make it? And, and you are a true treasure yeah, hunter, my yeah, friend. I'll yeah, tell you that. Yeah, you know, yeah. like trash of treasure. That's yeah. what we create. Like you know, this thing, this story that I love hearing. Yeah. I mean, fuck, breaking your neck, bunch of DUIs. Yeah. I mean, that's a story right there. Yeah, bro. I yeah, appreciate yeah, you yeah. sharing that. Uh, Holy uh, hell! Absolutely. Well, I saw. Well, that that's kind of why I asked Charlie to be on the podcast. And um, when I saw your post a couple of few, maybe a month ago, three or four weeks ago, about. Here I am, what, seven years ago, sitting on a Harley. I'm assuming you were on a Harley. Yep. Unhealthy yeah. to today. Yeah. That was inspirational to me. And I was like, man, I, you know what? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to see if I can get both national champs <laughs> on the show with me. That would be quite cool. Well, okay. it's just like, you know, help try to boost his show as well, you know? Yeah, yeah. Well, it's like, I mean, I know at the surface I'm supposed to care about, like, exposure and views. and But I'm going to be honest with you. I just, like, like. I, like if God had a purpose for me, it's just talking to people. Yeah. Like, I just love hearing your stories. Like, yeah. and Max and I, um, we almost feel gluttonous at a certain point. L listen to these perspectives. Cause it's like, it just puts shit in perspective. Yeah. You know, like, it's not like, Oh, his story's worth mine or her story's worth well, mine. It's just like, wow, yeah. that's so inspirational. You know, we had yeah. somebody on yesterday that, uh, you know, I've heard a lot of horror stories about relationships and bad relationships. Well, these two, <laughs> the, yeah. But these two people, they, they, their trash disturbers story is the fact that they were kind of doing good. They were, they find their path of personal excellence, which I really love that term. Um, and then now they're using their relationship to like build value together. You know, you don't hear that kind of shit in, in today's world. Everybody wants to talk about like, turn on the fucking news. It's all bad. Turn on. Anything. Uh, yeah. I don't even watch the news anymore. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's, it's like, you know, I, 
I don't want to trash to treasure. I, yeah. I, I I love Tom's story because it's it's the fact of what how he how his how he grew up, and then not having to, to get involved with that. You know, had the respect for his his mom. For your and, mom. And, that you that know, to me that that hit. And, and, right there. Yeah, and and I had that too, but it just you know that's why I kept like. I, I swear, my my mom was the greatest enabler, but she, but that, that when I asked for help at 38 years old, that was the first time I I, you know, I, I could finally muster mm -hmm. to say who I really was. I am this piece of shit. Yeah, I got a problem. Yeah, no, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah and, and I need help. Yep. yep. You know, and and I was uh, always afraid. I was always yeah, afraid to I, ask for help. I knew I had big problems. I mean, there was the cocaine days, and and not too long ago, in the not very near future, or how do you say that? Not too not far so back. Past. Not so distant past. Not so distant past. You know, with all the injuries and stuff, I ended up getting hooked on the pain pills. Mm. And let me tell you something. That was 10 times harder to overcome than cocaine ever was for me. Mm. But the, the proud thing, I, I never asked for help with my drug addiction and everything because I was embarrassed about it, obviously. And then your mom came along and I yeah. saw an opportunity. I said, this, this girl's madly in love with me so well, one, i think she could certainly help me get my shit together well and, one thing about me and my mom like i mean you know i'm one of those family members where like i'm gonna fucking say something oh yeah you know like i don't give a fuck what you want to hear <laughs> like don't get me wrong I'm, I'm learning how to be healthy with it sure. right, yeah, but I, yeah. there's this statement i love where it's it's it basically goes how can I love, like, the person that challenges you to be the best is the one that loves you the most. How can I sit here and say I love you the most if I know there's more you could be doing and I'm not at least attempting to find a healthy way to get you there? Yeah. You know, and I'm not saying, you know, because that, 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 there's that shit, oh, if they really love you, they're just going to love you just the way you are. No. no. Hell no. No, that's, I love who they are, but. Yeah. So that's how I, going back to yeah, no, when please. I was, got married and had my first kid, that's, that's kind of my thought process and. And my ex-wife's thought process, right? So we, we have a kid, and uh, what got me to end up getting divorced, so get into that. Um, we had two other kids. We actually moved to Oklahoma for a little while because, you know, like I said before, I wanted to change, and I want to be the person who changed, and she cheated on me. And But I still said, okay, but I, I, don't, want to, I don't want to live in this town anymore. Let's, so we decided to move to Oklahoma. That's where her father lived. And we thought, okay, change of, change of scenery, change of life, whatever, you know. Went out there, and it lasted a year out there. And we just couldn't make it work. Yeah. We just couldn't make it work. Yeah. So we ended up going back. I had two more kids. Things were great. Um, and then I think when my daughter was five, um, I don't know. I think my, my ex-wife had postpartum, they call it. Mm -hmm. started drinking and I didn't even know she was oh, drinking mine went through that as well um, she's talked we've talked since and stuff but you know she she went on another deep end or you went know, through her and, dark yeah, spiral or whatever yeah yeah and, and just uh, you know so I, getting back to the cheating thing we so I, I find out she was cheating me so I start cheating her like like trying to trying to make it justify it. exactly you know like we're talking about before right so okay well you can do that i can do that you know like yeah. mm -hmm. and it, it was unhealthy obviously and and you know if you going back to what i talked about before and notches on my belt i'm like well okay i, I don't have the hair anymore but i can still get some women you know yeah <laughs> yeah so i uh start this sweet ass goatee and yeah, start <laughs> I, th exactly so i did that and it, it just wasn't healthy and then my daughter, you know, everybody got kind of, my oldest son's moved out. I have my daughter, and all of a sudden she gets pregnant. Oh and uh, she's still in high school, and I'm like, I didn't know how to feel. I didn't know how to take it. You know, like, I'm like. Is that because of the, the, the promiscuous lifestyle that you were living? You almost didn't want to be hypocritical? Or? Correct. Okay. Bingo. Yeah. 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 And I'm like going, I didn't know how to feel. And I'm like, you know, and my wife at the time was saying, well, we're blessed. We're going to have a grandchild. And I'm like. And I realize now that's totally true. Yes, <laughs> it, is. Right? Yeah. it is. But at the time, the logical part of your brain is saying, "Yeah, but there is another side of the coin that we got to right. think about it." Yep. Yes. And at the, but at but the our, time, I'm like, oh, eh. "A child is about to have a child." You yes. know. So. so I decide to go even deeper down the spiral, as Charlie was saying, mm -hmm. and I end up joining a motorcycle club. Oh boy. Because oh, okay. <laughs> that seemed like the right thing to do. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. And I won't name who you, they, yeah. get your up. I won't name who they were, but yeah. <laughs> so now I'm in a motorcycle club in Connecticut. Uh, and I'm working the bar because we have a we have a clubhouse yep. and 
you know, I'm up there till two o'clock in the morning and serving other clubs that come into our place. And, mm -hmm. You know, mm, um, the club life. Yeah, doing the club life, and and I just, you know, we're talking January, February in Connecticut. It's cold. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's on, on a motorcycle. On a motorcycle. You're, you're yeah. insane. And I'm going back home. I got apes, and I'm like, it's got a pin just sitting here like this, doing about 130 on the highway. I didn't care about living. I mm -hmm. that. I just didn't care about living. Yep. Amen. You know, yeah, you're not like, trying to die, but you so definitely. Yeah, right. If you yeah. check out right now, yeah. If whatever. something happens, it's, you know, two o'clock, two thirty in the morning, yeah. and the deer runs out in front of me, I'm gone. Yeah. I know that. Yeah. Who cares? Yeah. Ah, yeah. Who cares? You know. And and I did that for a while, and I, I ended up becoming very unhealthy. Mm -hmm. How long um, ago was that? That was I'm trying to think, 2010, 2011. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Not so, too long ago, right? Yeah. Not too long ago. Yeah. So. Um, Actually, 2013. I take it back. 2013. Wow. My granddaughter's born in 2013. So, um, at any rate, I uh, went down that whole path and, uh, you know, tried to make things work with the ex and just didn't happen. So, I ended up getting divorced. Um, got a girlfriend that was in her 30s. Thought, ah, oh, this is going to be great. It wasn't great. Nah. <laughs> nah. That wasn't great. <laughs> and um, my high school sweetheart, who I met in high school, and uh, you know, I went back on social media, reconnected with her, and we started talking. And like, she was in a, kind of a relationship with this guy that was living with her. And but then we're like, we started talking more. I'm like, man, she goes, you're dating that girl. I'm like, oh, it's not really serious. She goes, man, it's not really serious right now either. I kind of want him out of the house. And so we started. All right, we want to try to make this work. Sure. So we start talking more, and mm -hmm. I broke up with that girl, and she kicked him out of the house. And I, at the time, I was like 235, 240 pounds. Oh, wow. Oh, I was wow. a big boy. Yeah, I was not I healthy. Can't you at That's why I was saying I was, I was not healthy. What are you now? Yeah, 180? 25. 25. Yeah. So uh, I'm like, you know, I, I'm going to see this girl again because she's now we're talking about seeing each other. And, uh, I gotta start doing something. Yeah, <laughs> you know. So I, I start that. push up, sit up, some, you know, because I wasn't racing at the time. I wasn't riding my bike, nothing. So she she comes up to Connecticut, visits. I come down here, visit, and then she goes, "All right, things like you know look like they're gonna be cool." So she goes, "I can live anywhere in Florida because of her job, but I can't move out of Florida, so I have to move down here." So I'm like, "Okay." So I go to my boss and say, "Okay, I'm put my notice in." Yeah. Give me movies. Like I want three months notice. So. Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> well, I had a lot of clients, like I, I yeah, like marketing. No, I, I so he wanted me to kind of, yeah. So anyway, it worked. Uh, so I moved down here. And did you do the three month notice? I did. I did. God, you are a good. Employee. Well, what happened? Was, I was able to transfer with that company down here. Oh, okay. Now I get it. That so makes sense. Yeah, 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 yeah. I thought you were just yeah. like. No, no, no. Yeah. yeah. I was like, no, man, you are one class. hell of an employee. No, you no, started no. with no. talking to her. No. No, this is Stephanie. Yep. talking about. Yep. Okay. Yep. So I uh, started talking to Stephanie and moved down here with her. We lived in Longwood for a while, and she's always wanted to live in Palm Coast. I said, "Let's do it." She was like, "Really?" I'm like, "Yeah." Cool. So sold the house and bought a house in Palm Coast, and yeah, she's helped me out. Well, so <laughs> then she goes, "I'm." I was kind of like when we were living in Longwood, you know, I'm like trying to get in shape and stuff. She's like, "Why don't you start racing BMX again?" And I'm like. Oh, so you found you a good one. Well, you married. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. No doubt. No doubt. <laughs> Move across the country. So, she's yeah. She's like, oh, you uh -huh. love being. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Amazing. There you go. So, and she knew I raced back in the day because, you know, I'm still doing it when we met. Were you married yet when you came down? Or huh? Had you no, 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 no. So we got married a couple of years ago. So, but, but I was going to say, when she said, well, she started well, racing BMX, BMX, I'm like, were you marrying me? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Where I've been at. So it's funny. When we started talking, it was like, yeah, I never want to get married. She was happy either and stuff. And, uh, yeah. Same exact with his mother and I. We were together ten years before we got married. So, well, I, you know, I waited till uh, two months until she came to see me. I'm like, hey, will you marry me? Yeah. <laughs> wow. Because it was just, you know, I don't know. I just, yeah, it was perfect timing, whatever. But yeah. Yeah. I so think I, when you find the right person, I don't need a piece of paper. I knew it. Yeah. You know, when when your mom and I got together, it was the same way. It was like, well, I'm not getting married. Well, just going you know, through the relationships nowadays. I mean, I feel for you. Because it you know, was tough on him. Man. Yeah. Well, I just mean I just no, mean anybody I mean, I mean, yeah, now, you know, yeah. just dating and, and going through stuff or 
The, it, it, it's super, and it's yeah. easy once you figure it out. It's just like everything else, man. I can really only control today, uh, and I don't really give a flying fuck about relationship. Uh, like, like, don't yeah. be wrong. Not that well, I'm not well, open it's to gonna happen. It's not gonna open happen. one, but I'm gonna worry about me, right? And my family. And, hey, if you can love yourself first, then you'll find. And I'm, it's right. funny you mention that because, like, right now, I mean, I'm not gonna say her name on here because that would be weird. No, yeah. But there's no, there's a chick, you know, kind of. Okay. I knew her in school, and uh, just ran into her. So like. We're just kind of not talking in any way. Just like, um, but I saw her. I'm like, shit, I got to, I'm taking care of myself, but I need to kick it up a notch. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Cause she, you know, she looks phenomenal. I'm like, oh, way out of my league. But here we go. No. <laughs> She's not out of your league. All right. We're not going to go deep yeah, into that. Yeah, right. Tom, go ahead. <laughs> Before I put my foot in my mouth, I'm going to this fucking episode. So, yeah. So, Stephanie goes, you need a hobby. You want to start racing BMX again. Yeah. So, you know, when I stopped racing, I was riding for standard bikes. I had my standard bike and cru- just cruiser. So I went over to Orlando and man, that it, it was an eye opener for me. Cause like the tracks in Connecticut, I'm not going to say they're basic, but they weren't nothing like the tracks down here. Oh, okay. You know, they're just, you know, they're they're just basic back in the day. Yeah. yeah. But I'm just saying, basic. I'm yeah. just saying there's no soil oh, tech. There's right. no, right. no lippy yeah. jumps. Is soil tech saying? that shit that he was talking it's about? It's hard. Yeah. It's like glue. Yeah. yeah. We just yeah. did yeah. it's glued. Yep. Yeah. Okay. 36 so grit sandpaper kind of. Yeah. <laughs> so when you fall on it, you, you feel. But there's, it wasn't like that. If you like, it was. Oh, I had all know, kinds of things that didn't work for Daytona, Daytona, Daytona by the way, too. Nice. Like with the soil tech, because the pump kept, kept breaking. It's, it's just such a rinky dink operation. Yeah. And John looks at me at one point, because you know I kind of had a little bit of knowledge to share, you know, electrical experience. I had already told him, I said, You have any problem electrically out here? You call me up. It's, you know, my trade. But he asked me about how to improve on the thing, so I went home and whipped up a little something to. To, just to fix the, the pump system for the, you know, he went and got a new wand for it. But every, every time he'd move it, the hoses would pop off or the pump would lock up or whatever. So I'm working on a self contained little. Of course special. you are. Pump of course you are. <laughs> you walk up to the drum and you set it on the damn drum and you put the, you put the pipe down inside now and there's no more of this crap. Oh, it came unplugged. Oh, the bolts came off or something. It's, It'll be pretty cool. You're a and I'm building a new podium. Oh, nice. Nice. Oh, cool. for yeah, yeah. You're, a, you're a tradesman, Pop. You're yeah. a, and you're one of the best I know. Yeah. Well, it's <laughs> in the plans. We haven't <laughs> haven't actually started building it yet, but we are going to. Me and Sean are gonna. He's gonna do the welding, mm-hmm. and I'm gonna do all the cutting. But we're building a nice uh, diamond plate slash cool. real, real fancy podium, podium the way I got it set up. Let's pick up with Tom before we lose his train of thought. <laughs> yeah. No. So she just said, you know, go to Orlando. So I went to Orlando and. I came home that night and I'm like, I don't know if I can do this anymore. Like I was, you know, so it, she goes, no, you got to keep doing it. You got to keep going, keep mm-hmm. going. And then I hooked up with Drew Motley and, you know, talking about in the beginning of the podcast, you, you said the three different things that the person you can call. And he, oh yeah. Yeah. Three Drew's, Drew's, yeah. Drew's my guy. Drew is my guy. I love that. Which one is he? The he's, all, he's actually all of them. I was talking nice. to my buddy about that today. I think, you know, he, you exhibit it's it's hard to nail that one down it is to be like because all of my friends that i have now especially post dark time you know what i mean i thought i had a lot of friends now i got only got a couple yeah Yeah. um but it's like i think about i'm like man they exhibit all those yeah yeah drew's all of them for me nice yeah like so he got me more involved with bmx with hey i'm going to this race you want to go with me and so next day i'm traveling with him now now i'm doing nationals with him and uh then i ended up getting on yes which was the team at the time that he was on him and his wife yeah um, they it's a killer got, name. Got me on the team, yes. Mm. And then, uh, yeah, then we travel around. And, you know, so we, we'd be driving back from a national at 2 o'clock in the morning and talking about the race and, you know, the good parts, the bad parts, all of it. And even going there, we're talking about whatever, you know, training or whatever. So he's been a huge help for me in that regard. Uh, more importantly, just him and Lisa both have been great friends to me. Nice. So, yeah. Love to cool. Yeah. yeah. And then I think that's here we are today, right? Here we are today, yeah. yeah. I mean, uh, like, you know, so in 2019, I went into the Grands just racing cruiser. I didn't race 20 at the time. And I went into the Grands sitting number one and, and made the main. And, you know, I remember Drew saying, he goes, yeah, all you got to do is win. <laughs> of course, I blew the gate. And, oh, yeah. shit. <laughs> yeah. Didn't get it. But. I, just, I just saw a post the other day. I, I didn't realize Drew was Grand's was like the well. Super Bowl. Grand's is the Super Bowl of okay. BMX. Right. Yeah. Uh, awesome. yeah. And then yeah. Worlds is, yeah. but Worlds is above that. That's. Or is worlds it, is Worlds. Like, it's exactly what yeah, it is. Nationals just, are nationals. Yeah. USA BMX is USA. Right. And I think Canadians are involved with our stuff too. As well, well, I think they have Canadian nationals. Because I keep hearing Grand Nationals and Nationals. The same thing? No. 
the nationals are all like the, the big national race that we had here in Daytona last year, right after I started racing yep. again. That's a national. Gotcha. Friday's a, a points race, Saturday's a points race, Sunday's a points race. Yeah. Picture, so the, the, the Grands is like the Super Bowl. That's it's, what I was just it's, saying. It's yeah, Indy yeah, yeah. 500. Yeah, yeah. Or the Grands is the so Daytona then, 500 to BMX. So then what's the world? Because y'all said that That's too. the Indy 500 to BMX. Oh, because now everybody can yeah. That's yeah. everybody in the world. Yeah. Gotcha. That's like I was just saying in the beginning. Yeah. There was 50 different countries, at least, that were represented at the Worlds that are in South Carolina right now because yeah. we're hosting Worlds. And last year, where, where did they do Worlds last year? Uh, Glasgow. Glasgow. Scotland. What? Scotland. 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 That's right. Yeah. Now, have you guys, you either of you competed in the Worlds? So I did the Worlds in 83. You in, did? In, in Holland. Whoa. Yeah. yeah. Amsterdam? In Am- no. Uh, um, Why? Well, we we, Holy we shit. spent we spent we spent a week in in England, a week in Germ. No, it was in Germany. Excuse me. Okay. So that's what. It, the, but we spent a week in Ho- in Holland. Of course. You know, and okay. and okay. and, yeah. and the sad <laughs> thing though, the sad thing though, <laughs> the sad thing though with with BMX then, see these sponsors paid and sent their whole team and all this stuff over to the worlds, and I'll tell you now, I I mean. I don't know. There's probably not very many teams, even at, at, that the worlds are here in 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 the United States, mm-hmm. that the teams are paying for their riders to go. Mm-hmm. The parents and the families are paying for out of pocket, those out yeah. of pocket, and it's expensive. I was about to say, so it's like even if so, say there's yeah. a kid back home that's better than them, but it comes from a poverty ridden area. Yeah. He didn't make it. The, well, they, yeah, the parents don't have it. Well, it's I mean, like I didn't right. play hockey yeah. when I was a kid because we couldn't afford to travel. There was no. kids at Daytona track uh, that were selling candy to fund their racing. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah. I, well, good for them. Honest, yeah, yeah, 100%. And, and yeah. That's, that's my scenario this year now that we're not, you know, that I'm not. Last year I traveled with my family. We, we successfully made it. I successfully made it without any injuries. But we traveled from, from January to, to November. And, um, when it came up this year in January to go to a race, so Jan- this January 2024 had two nationals in Florida, in Florida back, yeah. back to back. Yep. Mm-hmm. And then a week or two weeks later was the state race okay. that we had. That, that, I that was thought, the one St. Augustine? Yes, sir. Yep. Gotcha. It would have been $4,000 for entry fees. Just, what? just for my family, for family. For to, to race to for me and my three kids to race. Yeah. It was, it would have been four thousand dollars yeah. for entry. And fees. what's the payout opportunity? There's no <laughs> payout. <laughs> for amateurs. There's, oh, a <laughs> There's a plaque. Yeah. Oh, okay. Amateurs. There's a plaque. My bad. It's Damn, the fun. Like, I just stepped off. Some yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, it's sixty dollars back. Because if you get stamps, it's fifteen dollars for first. As long as you get first, though. Yeah. I, I don't care where I finish. <laughs> it's the point. My new goal is this year, man. I want that fifteen bucks back. <laughs> oh man! How, how, is, how, how am I? How am I gonna afford four thousand dollars a month? Yeah. I mean, right now I'm sitting in forty thousand dollars in debt. Oh yeah. From last year's race. And you're supposed to justify spending four yeah. grand. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and so, that's so that's tough. that's that's the sad part of yeah. of yeah. where this sport's at. Yeah. And. Yeah. Because the yeah. sponsors ain't going to pay you to go. Yeah. Yeah. Well, here's the thing. There's not, like we were talking about before with the 80s, how at the end of the 80s, the large companies kept going for a while. But even those large companies are gone. Like GT's gone, gone. For as big as they were. You know, there's... Uh, they didn't they get bought out, though? It's, they still exist. Yeah. It sounds to me like... They also, they also sold out to bikes. China or yeah. whatever. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Bikes yeah but they're not... Scooters and right, stuff Right, but like these, these companies aren't putting money into BMX. It sounds to me like y'all, your sport needs a Jake Paul. Like uh, some old... My sport gets a Jake Paul. I'm taking his ass over the berm on the first freaking motor. I'm gonna, the first motor. I'm going to go to Fishkill, New York and pick up Mike. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Catskill. Uh, he's from Fishkill. Fishkill? Fishkill, New York. No, from Catskill. Uh, it, it, need, it needs it's something. Because, well, yeah, it's, just like that revitalization. I used to like, drive through Catskill, New York, over the year. Top, it just drives money into the sport. It, 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 it's it's just, it's really Catskill, bad. Catskill, New York, and, home of my and, and, Fishkill. And, you know, uh, so there, there, there's, not that I don't believe, but you won't find a lot of critics today of where BMX is at from the organizational standpoint because it's it's just, you know, for as many races they have, the cost and all this stuff, and and then the, the sponsors aren't there to to pay for it. I mean, like I said, sponsors were paying amateurs salaries. Yeah, you know, now they're not even paying. 
I mean, we, we have, we have a good mutual friend on, um, who Tom races with that their child is an, is a world champion, national champion. And they don't, they get a very, they don't get treated or sent to or paid for races like they should be. Yeah. You know, and it's sad. And so what you have this, your child as this world champion, national champion five plus times over, mm -hmm. and they're not given the golden carpet. I mean, you know, it's just, it's, it's not there anymore. So mm -hmm. how, you know, we're doing this for the love of yeah. the love of it. I'm and, doing it to yeah. try to stay in shape. Right. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Trying not to be 240 pounds again. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. But, but <laughs> if you had three kids, could you do it? You I, know, did three were, ki but I did have three kids. I did have three kids. Yeah. All yeah. 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 No. Racing, God, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Thing. Right. It, it's just, no it's not sustainable. And right. that's not without a sponsor. That's right. Yeah. But, there's no sponsors out no, there doing yeah. that. Right, 100%. Well, they're not, there's was nobody. Well, it's like that. I said, then, then I the question, assumed. it's kind of like, you know, one of the things I love about the personal journey of mine mentally is like, I hear this and I know it's kind of, I'm outside the zeitgeist here, so I don't know what the hell I'm talking about. But it sounds to me like the problem is not that they're not paying. The problem is figuring out how do I sell it? Who's going to buy it? And what do I, what can I find in the sport? You know what I mean? Yeah. Right. It's, it's like, all right, how do I sell this? Yeah. You well, know, how do I make it, this if, not, you know, yeah. obviously not the entry, but it's like, that's why I but, said the Jake Paul. But the organization yeah. is not bringing like, so it used to be on ESPN or the Coca-Cola used to be involved. These, sure. And, and, and why isn't Monster and, and Rockstar and, and they're, you know. Well, it's uh, like I told him, yeah. eventually I want to set up a, a podcast for y'all. Yeah, that's what we were trailer. talking about. Yeah. We're you know, like I mean, mon I mean, monetization podcast, value. Get one of the big dogs out of Yeah. It, but it's just, it's just, it's sad because of, of, you know, where the kids are these days. And now, there's you know, there's a lot, there's a lot to be made, you know, from it for, uh, you know, for. Cause you guys live the golden age. Yeah, like you were saying. hundred I mean, like percent. today, I, I can name maybe three pros. And I think one of them kind of feels, does he still race? He doesn't. No. Oh, okay. So he's, cause he was like a. He coaches. He was a hot dog. And now we got Barry Nobles. Yep. And um, Western Merlot, because he's a local pro. I mean, that's come on, you know Rain Langford. Rain, okay, okay. yes, Rain. He <laughs> sure. Badass. Jeremy Smith. No, 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 no. no I know Rain. Is, rain. is that is, is that the guy that hangs with Rain? Yeah. Okay, okay. so, so they, those two guys were set up at a few. They were set up at the national. Unless you're talking about Will Will Grant. I've heard, yeah. I've heard the name. I've heard the name. Yeah, I mean, yeah. There's, there's tons of guys. So, but yeah, yeah, I mean, I don't know them. Like back in the day, it was like the one, the Greg one, Hill, Stu Thompson, Pete Rock, oh, Caravis. The, one, the no. one thing too, which missing in BMX is is that is that attraction. The young kids. Yes. You know, I the know. young kids yeah. would flock, and and yeah. knew all the riders. And yeah. Nobody. Nobody's signing nobody, autographs no, anymore. Nobody, nobody signing, cares about the pros and, yeah. and because, hey, they're not making any money. Right. Dude, in 84, when you got second in the Grands, right. how was your bike after the finish line? That was from 82. It was yeah. just as an amateur. They'd, they'd steal your pads, your plate. Yeah. You know, ask your jersey. Just kidding. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's yeah, how it was. was. Yeah. I mean, there's kids mobbing you to get that. Yeah. You know, even when in Gary Ellis, when he retired, he did a whole retirement year, and every national he went to, he had a New Jersey GT provided right. with a jersey, mm -hmm. and he would throw it out, and there'd be kids all waiting for that. I was lucky enough to get one in nice. South Park. Oh, that's cool. I had to beat up a bunch of uh, Long Island guys to get it. <laughs> <'cause>, uh... <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah, that's right. What I didn't realize is this guy Dan Bailey was a huge GT uh, uh, Gary Ellis fan, and uh, he, you know, they were all trying to get that jersey from Danny. Danny ended up actually getting it at the Grands that year. So. Nice. <laughs> But it was cool. Yeah, I, I was actually talking with somebody about that just the other day about BMX. And I was like, because oh, you race at your age. I was like, dude, when I was a kid, <laughs> there was half a dozen adults. I mean, yeah. the oldest people at the track were 20, 25 at the most. And then there was maybe a half a dozen guys in their 30s or something that all raced cruiser. Yeah. yeah. So when I come back now and I'm like, holy shit, I'm, we're, we're looking at like 50-50 split here. Us old guys over here, and there's that many kids. It makes perfect sense, though. I mean, for it's those, probably, of, you, we're probably for those of you that live the golden kids, age, but, right? To, and then you come back around, you're like, I want to get healthy, and I fucking hate running, but I love <laughs> right, bikes. Right, yeah. right. I'm gonna see, and then it's awesome that you guys have all kind of just 
just gravitated. Like right. there was no plan for this. No. Yeah. Like like just a bunch of eighty. I got a BMX random video one day. Like, right. Yo, you're cool. Bikes are cool. Let's go. Yep. Well, I don't know. <laughs> you know what I mean? I know Charlie turned pro, but like when you first started racing, was it sixty and over expert? Like the highest proficiency? Well, no, it was probably the proficiency for oh, the oldest. it was definitely sixteen and 16 over. Sixteen over. Yes. And then they made it seventeen and over. Right. And then I think it went to 18 and over. So it kept progressing. Oh, that was like the peak. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Was yeah. Like, so wait, 17? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. There was, Abs- no. There was no 56 and over experts. No, it was, no. it was so, 16 and over. So if you, but oh, that, so you guys watched like literally the growth here. Oh, yeah. 100%. Oh, from from yeah. day one, yeah. 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 Well, okay. I didn't realize. That's what I'm saying. Like, that the progression right. of how it started, like where it started, was 16 and over. And then it kept going up and up. Oh, because yeah. so many older guys kept staying with it or wanting to be in it, but couldn't. Compete with sixteen-year-olds, obviously, or seventeen-year-olds. So they go, all right, we're gonna make it eighteen and over, and then, well, then they start splitting the classes. Yeah. So yeah. Well, it sounds like the sport's just getting started. Then, if you're thinking about it that way, because time is just. I'm optimistic about yeah, the sport you never know. because of because of the fact that we do have the Olympic exposure now. You know, it's an. Hey, it's just in the say, '80s. Well, if you would have asked me if they're ever gonna make BMX an Olympic sport, I would have laughed. Yeah. No, but it, do that. Florida does unique, have you know? this strong this it this. This series, their state series, is is phenomenal. Is number one in the country because no, yeah. even not even California can compete. Florida, but I think California that. in the eighties was like it is here now. Yeah, yeah, that makes yeah. Sense, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah, uh, so so, and yeah. that's all it takes. Yeah. yeah, hard to stay alive is just one hub. You know, right now stand up right. comedy is Austin, Texas. Yep, but it was L.A. Okay. for a long time. Sure, right. you know, and and but now Central Florida is blowing up. You know, and it's I love to hear it. Yeah. Um, I will say, guys, I'm going to cut this short. I always I hate cliffhanger in these, but you guys have laid down such a rad oh, baseline good. for yeah. this um, that we'll cir- I want to circle back. You know that that's the whole point of this show. It's not to get somebody on or to get the three of you on vibing together and then just oh you'll never come back. No no no. I want to hear. <laughs> like, I want to have you back in six seven nice. months if you got time. Yeah man. And let's hear. Okay they you know they met Tom and Charlie and talked to my pop because like he, we had him on and now the guests know post state rake race rig nice um, yeah i didn't win the championship because that was the conversation it was like <laughs> yep. will you come back after the state series is over i said hell yeah i'll come back and hopefully i'll have a you know a number one title with me i will say this fun. great group of guys i What's race plate, with man? the plate I, I brought your plate my plate is uh it's, oh, it's actually strapped struck to my bike because i ran my state plate. Oh, okay nice okay. Because, okay. until Fair i get enough. I'm getting one of those Vice Custom inserts for nice. my new Zero Nine plates, okay. and uh, when that yeah. comes in, I'll take my state plate off and hang it on the wall, and that's nice. where it'll stay. Because I don't, I lost all my other stuff from back in the day. I had my '83 Grands, you know, my National Points Award plate, my big trophies and everything, and everything's gone. My last two trophies that I didn't sell, because the local horse riding club used to buy my trophies and unscrew the BMX guy and nice. horse guy yeah. put a new tag on it and sell them or hand them out at the, to the horse races, but. Uh, I had my plate and my last two trophies, my Grands Trophy and my Points Award Trophy, and they were in my brother's house when it burned to the ground. So, oh. I'll go. I, I'm, I'm interested to hear your journey too. Yeah, man. Oh yeah. Because because it, you know, yeah, I'm kind of I'm tabling mine. Um, just, You're tabling yours. Well, it, it it keeps coming out in small doses. Okay. But like as the growth of the show, you know, like I told you guys stuff I've never said on the show yeah. before. Huh? You know, and, and I feel like that. That little bit it keeps it keeps the fire alive of why I started this. Nice, you know, not not yeah. by like holding it in. It's just that hatred that I had of myself for so long has mm-hmm. driven me to this, yeah. and it's such a beautiful gift from God to be able to. All I was ever looking for was perception. I was just looking to hear from people, and so I have that now, um, which leads me into like normally this is the part of the show I like to end all my shows. Or Max and I like to end our shows with two questions. This is going to be very interesting because I've never done it with three people before. <laughs> um, so I'm gonna I'm gonna lay these two questions out. I, we Maybe think yes. we've uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty good. Um, and then you guys can just kind of freestyle it and let me know what you guys all think about it. Uh, the first one we've already kind of dabbled on it, and it's have you guys found in your life that you are your own worst enemy? And feel free, whoever. I'll take this. Yeah, go for it. I want to hear from all three of you, but. I've always been my own worst enemy. Yeah. My my mental struggles with anxiety, depression, and 
caving in to the temptations of all the stupid shit I've done in my days. I've I've got to hold a lot of that. I mean, I got got free from addiction and all that good stuff. Been that way for quite a while now. Very proud of myself for that because I never had any help quitting all those hard things. So that's why I looked at things like cigarettes. I'm like, man, I've quit opioids. I've quit cocaine. All that would no help. You know, how can I not freaking put a cigarette pack down? You know, mm. how about mom, though? That's, yep, that no. makes it very difficult. However, I will say... No, no, I'm saying you said you had no help. When I went... Oh, no. that I didn't ask for help from like professional. Oh, I never went to a I rehab you, or anything you. like that. I just saw too many people going in and out of rehab. I, Look no, at my no. brother. I, I got you. I mean, you know... I was, again, I was good. saving you a flick. You of have to watch. That's all I was doing. <laughs> no. Mom's going to hear that shit. Like, what? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, no. it's Yeah, I've always been my own worst enemy and always been inside my own head. Mm. And, you know, I'm, I'm still working on trying to overcome that. I mean, that was a perfect example at the state race a couple of weeks ago. That was just me getting in my own head, letting the anxiety get the best of me. There you go. And... I overcame it, like I said, and I believe that was God talking to me because, like I said, I've already said it a few times, but when I stood up after that crash and I realized I wasn't hurt, I wasn't bleeding anywhere. But did you die? I did not die. (laughs) Nobody ran over me. Nobody ran over my bike, which was a freaking miracle. And I, when I stood up, I took off because I saw the guy who was running last and I was like, I can catch his ass. Yeah. And I started cranking and I'm like, wait a minute. I got to pass four of them guys for even to be relevant to make the main. Mm-hmm. So I'm not going to do it. I'm just going to cruise around. And I, I remember riding around that track at peace. I had the biggest smile on my face. I was waving to people. I think your mom was over there. But I heard him really? scream. I heard her voice. So I'm waving, coming down the last stretch, like, hey, how y'all doing? You know, because I knew. And, and she's like, well, all you got to do is not finish last in the second moto, and you'll, and you'll make it to the main. I says, oh, I'm, I'm aware. She says, you're going to take it easy. So, you know, I said, oh, hell no. I'm going out and make a statement in the second moto. And I did. I mean, I smoked it and made the main. And then, of course, we know how that worked out. I know one that one. So, but like I said, after the crash, it was mm-hmm. I, I don't I don't I can't remember ever feeling you, so much at peace. Like, thank you, God. So ultimately, yeah, yep. you, you have ultimate control of your choice to to, to, you to stand on top of it. Sometimes I am unable to. We all do gain that control. And that's the I inner. Start going that, down that rabbit hole again, but that's that inner. Usually able to drag myself up out of it. Mm-hmm. So, how about you guys, Tom? Yeah, I mean, I I've got demons that are in my head right like you know, everybody, else, everybody else yeah right exactly you know so i've got i question a few things in, in life and uh and whatnot um but i think i'm a lot better where i am today than i was seven years ago nice. um you know i i'd listen to him talk about the anxiety about this state race and i don't know when it comes to racing for me i'm pretty chill and, and so friday night before the state i didn't even go to the practice on friday because practice there's only practice on friday i didn't even go i'm like i went two weeks ago i rode that track i got late i got there late and only got to the night practice but i got a couple laps so i mean i was like you know whatever who cares i had a call i got home at work at six o'clock and i get a call from john pringle and drew and they're like hey bring your cruiser tomorrow i'm like what do you mean because i was only planning on racing my class bike that's all i did for the state series like well we already signed you up for cruiser so bring your cruiser i'm like (laughs) Because I had I, all intentions of not coming there early because I knew there was going to be a lot of motos. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, I'll just go second round. So I don't have, I can sleep in, you know, that's just be relaxed, whatever. Have my coffee in the morning. I have to get up early, you know, and now I got to get up early. <laughs> so I still have my coffee, got bikes, got in the car, got to the track. And I show up and, you know, was, I think they had already run pros by the time I got there. So I'm just getting ready for cruiser now. So I go up and race cruiser and Charlie racing. So I'm just pretty relaxed. I just, you know, I go out there and just whatever. Did you double less? Mm-hmm. Did you double at the state final? Yeah. yeah. Nice. Yeah. Well, I, I, I had only... Charlie yelling behind me the whole time. Oh, I know. It's like, I was <laughs> laughing because I come up to him after this. Like, I said, did he get you again? Because I missed the second motor. I said, yeah, he said, I just need to quit. Fucking, I got to something about it. I got to quit yelling at him. I keep yelling at him out there on the track. So I'm actually over at the fence watching the main and uh, man, it was crazy. You were giving him hell there at the beginning. That that, that's that first of, turn was... That. Did it, you see that on the first uh, turn? You you, he it. went through that gap though yeah, yeah. and I'm thinking, oh my God. But look at your mouth. It's wide open. You're yelling yeah. at me. Yeah. <laughs> 
Oh, no, that was that was that that uh, that's that's fucking hilarious. I didn't see that. So Charlie tells me before the motor. Oh, I'm just gonna stop yelling. I gotta concentrate and I gotta go. So he made the most crazy pass, and because you were in like fourth after the first straightaway, and that pass on the first berm, you went down between I think Pringle and somebody else. All right, Patrick, because I think Patrick's in the picture. Okay, so he he goes in between, and it was. I'm like, whoa, shit, threading the needle there, right? <laughs> so then they come around the second bar. I mean, he caught up to Tom. But then on the third straight, Tom, Tom, Tom started pulling away from him. <laughs> and I see Charlie's like, <laughs> just yelling at him. He slid out of, Rah! So I go to the finish line, you know, to congratulate them both. And I says to Charlie, like, what happened to not yelling, dude? <laughs> <laughs> You know, if you can't beat them, have fun, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. And yeah, that's yeah. what I see in you when you're out there. It's, yeah. it's so fun. Because the first moto I ever watched Charlie race, okay, was the was the final or the main on Sunday in St. Augustine. And you raced this guy. Oh. That was the first time we ever sat and watched your, your live moto. Yeah, you boys right? do BMX minute for yep. a second. I'm going to go rock and piss. You go. Yeah, yeah. And, um, yeah, the, the first moto I got to watch you was that one where you got him at the end. Right. And I was at the finish line, and oh, I was just yeah. like, wow. Yeah. And that was all I could Dude, say was every, wow. Everybody, I mean, even Rain Langford came and he goes, that was an awesome race you it guys It was an amazing yeah. race. I, probably the best race I ever watched. It, it, it didn't touch each other. Yeah, no. Right. <laughs> well, I, it was the wow because it was, a, it was really the first time I ever saw anything of that magnitude, and really witnessed in person live me watching a Charlie Williams race and you just beat the guy that I had been watching for the last nine months since I got back into BMX that I thought was unbeatable. I mean, but unbeatable. then to watch your class because the day before when Moto Mike beat me, I got mad, pissed off at myself, pissed off at him, yep. pissed off at everybody and I'm just like, I think you might have seen my post about it the next day or a few days later but I was like, man, that was the most incredible race and Tom right behind him, something to the effect of what I watched, right. watched the guy lose and, and lose with grace or something of that nature. And uh, I said, I really needed to see that after yesterday because yeah, no. the way I lost. Well, here's I, the thing. I, I, I already knew Charlie was fast. I'm like, oh, all right, well, this is awesome. I got competition. Yeah. yeah I got John Pringle, Patrick, uh, Johnny Turner, yeah, yeah. Uh, Greg Lanthorn. I mean, I got a lot of guys in the class, There's some fast but no one Charlie comes over. It's like, all right, this Ah, and he's pretty close to my house. I'm like, all right, I've been racing this guy a lot, so yeah, it's gonna be fun and uh, keep me on my toes. That know? was incredible, man. Yeah, that was. I've got to set you guys up with a podcast. Y'all would be hilarious. Yeah, <laughs> dude. Hey, that's not a bad idea, man. Doing a podcast from the. Camper. I proposed it to him, like you know, if because he's talking about once in retirement, he'll set up the uh, the camper oh, nice. and then setting up like. You know, one day just get them set up in the back so that you guys can just like at these races, just go in the back and just. Oh, that's just oh you know, if, he, if, he, if he really does decide to retire, we got to do a roast. No, he's talking, <laughs> he's talking about Ricky. Yeah, I'm talking, oh, oh, running out oh, of this. Like, oh, yeah, yeah, see, there you go. There's an idea. Yeah, when yeah, if he, yeah. if he when, yeah. So he decides, yeah. Yeah, he wants. <laughs> Y'all were born for this. Where I was telling him, I said, well, let me just do a BMX exclusive yeah. with these guys. Yeah, and yeah, I said, yeah. I, I'm going to post it on every page I'm on. Sure. I think we'll get a ton of hits. Oh, you know 100%. I mean? A that's lot a of people to, are going to tune in. That's a way it. to bring money into your sport. So then he was the one that actually suggested, man, you know what? Why don't we set you up in the camper? And hell, you grab one of the pros or one of the other, you know, yeah. one of the other big guys that everybody knows or the vets. Well, just anyone, man. That's what I've learned most about this journey. Is oh, like, I already thought about it. Well, I mean, no, what I'm saying is is what you just said there was it, it's everyone's idea when they start something, right? Especially when you're going after a media outlet. It's like, oh, I need to get, you know, I mean, Max and I, you can ask him, we're like, all right, I wonder how much it is to get Jelly Roll or, or somebody <laughs> on the show, you know, because they get Sure. But the my favorite part hands down is just I'm, we're talking to locals man and right. their stories are incredible yeah like i could give two f and it's it's naturally coming like we nice. just had shout out brandon bing um you know the proprietor of bangtail whiskey he's, oh, he's okay. the official whiskey of trash to treasure nice. now he launched this he came on and and he's got a big concert coming up and it that was just kind of god or the universe uh -huh. just like just kind of stumbled in front of me i'm like would you want to come on the show he's like I'm passing through there tomorrow on my way oh, back from the wow. Key West Music Festival, bro. Nice. Let's do it. And I'm nice. like, but it's it's nice. it's just this pursuit of like 
talking to my dad and his two friends. Yeah. You know, or like just any local. Everyone's story is amazing. You know, and it's just there's something to Everybody's it. Everybody's got a story to tell. Yeah, and if you're doing. willing to listen, it's it's a mind boggling oh, yeah. how much people just sit and talk to you. Yep. You know, words are power, man. That's it's one of God's greatest gifts. Yeah. How yeah. we use them is you, you and you just mentioned about being worst worst our own worst enemy and yes. And the thing the thing though is is that, you know, from sharing your experience, you never know who you're gonna touch. And it's like it's like why I'm not why I have, I have my heart's open or I am, I'm an open book is because I know there's other people that have struggled out there. I, I was that one trying to help my, one of my closest friends that, that couldn't make it and died, of, you know, in the disease. And, and I mm-hmm. just, all, all, and we, you know, Rick shared stuff with me and, and it's just one of those things where you have to you have yeah have, it's why i'm telling people what i'm doing today about trying to do a program and changing my diet and working out mm-hmm. and stuff because i i want that personal excellence is is the ultimate rebellion is with everything that's going on in this world if i'm succeeding and my family succeeding it's f the government you know it, whatever all that stuff is trying to do sorry yeah, they, no yeah, they want know. us eating fast food yeah, yeah. yeah. and it's yeah. not it's not i'm, yeah. I'm it's yeah, yeah. Love, is too I nice. Absolutely <laughs> love that you just said that because Max, yeah. why do we start this show? <laughs> no, no. He, if when I say it, he'll get it. Is the, the exact no exactly one hundred percent what you just said, Charlie? Was all I can ever ask for this show because we get enough. Damn the money, damn it. We get enough from you guys as guests to gain our own lives. All I can ever hope for is that there's a young man or woman out there that takes something. Yeah, it, it, like it helps if, someone else. Yeah, if, absolutely. Absolutely. if they can 100%. go through something and be like, thank you. That's that's it. That's yeah. all I can ever hope for. So I, thank you for mentioning that because that was, that was beautiful. The The last question that I ask, um, it's, it's kind of personal for Max and I. Now when you hear Trash to Treasure. Now that you know what we do here and the, and the message we're trying to push, um, kind of like where does it take your mind? How is it applied to your life? And what does it make you think of now that you know what this is? For me, for me, it's do it today. I've, I've always been that one. I was going to start something on New Year's. I was going to do it on my birthday. Yeah. And, and it was never, my wife would always say, why not now? You know, and that's, that's, you know, it, it took something where I traveled back to California two weeks ago. And I said, when I come back from that, I'm starting this program, you know, and I'm starting this and we're doing it as a family, oh, that's you know, wonderful. And, and we're all, all five of us are working out twice a day. You wow. know, we're on our diet. There's no more sugar cereals in the house. You know, yes. we don't do this. And, and it's, and it's drink, drink the water and it's read 10 pages a day. Yeah. Okay. So, so it's on. reading it's, well, it's, I just started this Tim Tebow book is this, today is your day. You know, this yeah. is the day. So it's not, a, so whatever it is, is just do it today. And all I have to do it is for today. I don't have to worry about the future. Well, I, I just, to just today. I just wrote a poem or a prayer the other day. Cause I'm back into writing. Um, Let's see if I can remember off the top of my head. Phenomenal artist as well. Let's see if I can remember off the top of my head. I might have a, a little plan. entrepreneur. See, I, I got him into my business down. that I was in. He has the potential to be very successful. And that's all you need to do is go to work building elevators. And you can live I a better life. I showed my son that. I showed yeah. my son that thing. I said, look, here, here you go. Oh, the one I posted yeah, about the elevator yeah, trade? Yeah. yeah. I mean, there you go. It's all right there in black mm-hmm. and white. Oh, yeah, and yeah. whether it's that or it's something else. All right, so I wrote this the other day. It kind of came to me and... All right, I got to find it somewhere else. Sorry, you guys. All right, there we go. Got it. Um, There's a couple of them, but this one, it rings true to what you just said. The only thing that has control of a head is God, and behind is nothing more than the memory of the past like a roaring lion. So fear not the noise and give thanks in his power for tomorrow because all we truly have is today, our daily bread, so rejoice and give thanks in that gift. There's no better way to remember the fleeting and beautiful nature of life itself. Amen. Very cool. You know, Amen. So yeah, I, yeah. I love I love what you're saying, yeah. and because yeah. that's it's it's true, man. I heard something in church. I feel like every time you go to church, there's there's one snippet of that sermon that's speaking to you, 
and that roaring lion thing, man. Mm. It, it, it encompasses anxiety and all the dark shit where it's like, ain't nobody ever died from roaring, man. <laughs> roaring ain't never killed nobody. Nope. But it's those choices you make when you hear the roaring. Right. So just stand on your two feet. Yep. Take it and keep moving forward. Like you said, just those choices. Make I, those choices. I, roar, I roared and it didn't <laughs> fuck him up. That's why I was mad. I thought I'd break him. I'm saying, I was telling him on the right, thinking I was going to be passing him on the right. Just nothing was working. That was a roar. <laughs> oh, hell. So, that's the whole thing like I said man I'm relaxed I'm focused yeah <laughs> just chill There's, I love that you guys talked about it that way too because it was like you just gave me three different perceptions on the last question where he's like yeah I'm just chilling he's like if I ain't winning I'm fuck yeah, I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm just rolling, now I'm gonna have man. fun and pop you know like it's, it's really cool to hear the different dynamics because pop's worried about something he shouldn't be worried about you're like I don't even want to show up anymore. <laughs> 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 and Charlie that's that's fucking that's, that's fucking poetry and motion right there. Kill, man. Yeah, it's poetry that. and that's motion cool. right there. And you came out on top on that one, huh? With that, uh, I'd love to. Yeah, yeah like that's a, what I, I said. I'd love to do twice. A, I'd love to do it twice. He doubled. He Is won a cruiser or okay. anyone in class. Yeah. So. All right, real quick before we go. What's what's this cruiser I keep hearing about? What's 24 inch? Okay, is that like 20 inch wheel, 24 inch? Got it. Is that like. Which one's more prestigious? The 20. The 20. 20 inch, yeah. Okay. Cruisers right. have come a long way because, like I was saying earlier, is that like, when we were kids and went to the okay. track, there were eight old guys that rode cruisers. Okay. That was All right. like yeah, it. That was, side note in my head, I'm like, they keep saying cruiser. I don't really know the differentiation there. Uh, but, anyways, big uh, wheel Tom, the, uh, I guess, same question, you know, like trash or treasure. Now that you know what we're doing here, is there anything? You've yeah, applied I mean, to your life that, or just what comes to mind, really? So, I, I, what comes to mind is like, you know, like I started racing when I was 13, and, and it took me 43 years to get number one. Really? <laughs> I, I meant to ask you that earlier. Yeah, Martin, 43 hey, years. I mean, there you to, go. Yeah, I mean, to get awesome. national number one, right? You know, I've raced all these nationals all these years and whatnot, went to the Grands many times. And, uh, yeah, it's the first time I've, and, and it was cool to race like people like Charlie and, Papa G and all those guys that were on the gate. I mean, all fast guys. Larry, you don't you don't get to the you don't get to the main event not being you know you got to be a fast guy to get in the main right. Yeah. And then to have you know Eric Roop on there who again Roop. Charlie and Eric and Harry were all on my wall as a thirteen year old kid. Yeah, and like now these you're guys, racing these guys. And now I'm racing these guys. And even in cruiser we had Peatland Carvin. The guy was like a four time ABA number one pro. Right. As Max and, would say, trash treasure baby. Yeah, and I'm like, and I put uh, you know, and it's just it's like surreal, right? Like. Now I'm the guy racing these guys, you know, and beating some of these guys. You know, yeah. you know, it's like, it's just for me, it's weird, and you know, and that's awesome. Yeah, well, no, it is. Because and, 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 my wife asked me what my goal was, you know, the big picture down the road. I said, look, I, I don't expect to go win national number one or anything like that, but I'll certainly give it all I got to try to get there. I said, but to me, it's a redundant the, the statement. Ultimate, if I've ever heard it. <laughs> the ultimate goal for me, my dream come true, would be to be sitting on the gate at Grands because I made the main and racing this guy and this guy and Harry Leary and Eric Roop and all them Who's other guys. Who's going to win? That would be a dream. I wouldn't give a damn if I flipped oh. the gate. I'd probably flip the gate on purpose. No. Like, oh, man, I got hurt. But no. I'm going to. No. Yeah. <laughs> no, hey, you know me, no, man. I'm all it, in. It. I'm all in. I know. I have. I, I just I want gotta, to see. I gotta come clean. I have been said doing about money. Of... That I thought three. Of you were gonna fucking yeah. jump me. I wanted. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I love it. Uh, yeah, so I mean, that's it's just 43 years that it took, and you know, not that I was trash at 13 years old, but no, yeah. I wasn't who I am today. And that's yeah, and you know, you didn't have great trash success. Does, as it a doesn't pro. mean right. trash, right? It encompasses the idea, like you just said it, and and I just clicked like. All right, you know, you, you reach this huge goal, you ain't done. No. The journey's not over. Oh, no. oh hell no. It's like you never stop. You know, you, you just you set your goal higher for the following year. Yeah. You, you just you just understand that the goal is when we're on our deathbed, we got killer memories. That's yeah. that's the finish line. Yeah, my goal last year was to get number one on both bikes. And I got one out of two, you know. So hell yeah. that was my goal. But yeah. some asshole. Yeah, Alex some guy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> some <laughs> well, West no. Coaster came in. Honestly, um, it was some guy from uh, uh, Northern California, Kent Elliott, who got in my way. But uh, <laughs> oh, a cruiser. Yeah, in the main. Oh, yeah. I will say he, blo he blocked me. Yeah, Did so he hard. Really? Yeah. Uh. <laughs> Sorry, Kent. <laughs> 
That's fantastic, man. So the uh, the last thing we like to do for our guests here is is basically give you the floor. If there's any any companies or people, and like I said, I'm kind of dropping the bomb on you again. I didn't tell you to prepare for it, but I have a feeling you guys can come up with a few. If there's any companies, people, anything you want to give a shout out to, could be from family to corporations. I don't care. The floor is yours. You guys take as much time as you love need because this is your time and, and show your love. Tell people if, if you want people to find you, let them know where stuff like that. Floor is yours, gentlemen. Here you go, my boy. Shout outs. Oh, man, I had a whole list of people I was going to shout out to, but <laughs> now I'm drawing a complete blank. That's my fault, boys. I got to get better about that. Telling people in the post show, like, hey, write down the list. Well, well I asked, we talked that. about this earlier in the week. I said, should I be writing down questions? Now, you he said, did. no, the whole thing is this is all spontaneous. No, no, it and was. Like, well, and it was I good. Could be spontaneous. You now, know? to be fair, Bob, you gave, a, sh- you is, gave a bunch no. of shout outs. Now, if you want BMX shout outs, you didn't give many of them last time. No, so shout out to, you know, obviously a lot of the guys. First of all, First and foremost, big shout out to all my Daytona BMX family members that are up in South Carolina right now at the Worlds. Joel Jason, Madalena, Mad Dog, his daughter. She's just a complete badass. Um, We've got several guys. There's a Brandon Gores kid. Don't know him very well, but he's from our track that's up there. Um, Renato Silva. Big shout out to Renato Silva. He's representing his home country of Brazil, but he is still... I don't care who he's racing. I'm going to be pulling for Renato because he is probably one of the nicest, just solid dudes you'll ever meet in your life. He's really a cool guy. So big shout out for Renato. Um, anybody else that I know that might be at, at the Grands or at the Worlds this weekend, let's let's get her done, USA. Right. And a uh, couple more. Um, yeah, and I'll let her rip. You know, shout it's out to time. shout out to Big Mike, Mike Warren. Yeah. Oh, I love you, brother. Man. He's yeah. a solid dude. He's a team member of Charlie's on the Zero Nine yeah. team, and um, one guy here knows why. But I want to give a shout out. A little weird, but a shout out to a man I've never even met or spoken to. Your mom talked to him today, though. Uh, a man by the name of huh. Kevin Shepman. Huh. So he actually owns the company Charlie races for. So your mom had a conversation with him on the phone today. So big shout out to Kevin. I look forward to meeting you in Nashville, sir. Mm-hmm. So it's all uh, you. <laughs> <laughs> well, first and foremost, I, I got to give it up to uh, Stephanie. Uh, she, I wouldn't even be here right now without her. So, Amen. Um, you know, I just uh, shout out to Debbie. <laughs> <laughs> too late but yeah. <laughs> no, you're getting I a flick her. in the ear I, <laughs> her, I know it's all good um yeah i wouldn't be where i am today without her and in, in terms of my health uh back to racing um any of that and just being the person i am today she she makes me a better person Amen. so uh and i know there's a lot a lot more i need to improve on and i am up for the challenge uh, <laughs> awesome. um yeah i want to thank my kids uh, tyler mason ashley my bonus son, Jake. Uh, Jake uh, owns uh, Van Cleef Media and uh, just uh, started sponsoring me as well. Okay. Um, so I, I'm going to talk to you later about that because I think he'd be a good person for you to of course. talk to for sure. Yeah, absolutely. Um, wow. Awesome, anyway, yeah. so, um, yeah. And then um, my sponsors, uh, S-Squared National Team, Amy Grips, Profile Racing, Gus and uh, John at Profile. Been great helps uh, this year. Um my coach Travis Turrison. Um, yeah, just uh, yeah, that's it. There you go. Yeah. All right, fuck yeah. Real quick, thanks. Patrick Dietz, Shirley Anderson, John Ryan. <laughs> 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 There's a lot of man. Tommy Gorga, man, I love that guy to death too. He's been he's been really cool. So, your yeah, turn. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I, catch up. I mean <laughs> Kyle and, and Max, I'm, you know, I appreciate this opportunity today, and Thank it, you, you yeah. know, I I I, uh, I look forward to. The future episodes and, and and where it's going, Absolutely. I think it's gonna it's gonna do really well. Um, you know, it's it's I, I, my blessings are are my family, like Tom and, and and Rick has said. It's 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 all about the family. Um, you know, we started back in the BMX. Uh, I I just I, I love this part of my story because when uh, in in twenty twenty one when I wanted to race again. Um, with COVID, I, you know, trying to figure out what I do with my kids, you know, we were, 
we had other hobbies that we did boating and a bunch of stuff but um you know i, I said let's get let's start racing again and and so uh i signed up for my card and i got a novice card you know because <laughs> yeah, I, I hadn't raced videos. in something 20 <laughs> something years and so i came back and then raced novice you know and people were a little upset about that I, <laughs> a little, a little sandbagger I, <laughs> I, I, Charlie went raced, I went and raced, with uh, all these question marks the vegas national and 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 i won and and then uh <laughs> two that. two weeks later i went to the local track and you know thought i was something and i broke my arm oh, and had to have sure. surgery Charlie. and and uh you ride hard, buddy. You ride yeah, real hard. Yeah. Well, my brain says I could do a lot of things. Yeah. You know how it is. All or nothing, yeah. though. And, uh, what, was, uh, what was my phrase they gave you in uh, yeah, Old Bar? There was no smooth as fast. <laughs> <laughs> this, this, was, this was hard and down. And so, uh, but what it did, what it did is it, it, it so now I was uh, laid up and my kids were just starting to back racing and it, and it brought my wife into the mix and, and she said uh, she drove the kids that weekend to uh, Spokane, 18 hours straight through to a national. And she had the most fun. She had a great time and That's the kids had an awesome time. And she was like, let's do this. Yeah. And that, that That's took awesome. us. So for the next, you know, two years from 21 to, to the end of 23, she was, she was BMX mom and she jumped all in and she, you know, she traveled everywhere driving. And, and so it, it's all because of her, you know, and and uh, and my kids. That's where how I got back where I was today. And you know, and and uh, thanks to Zero Nine and Kevin and and all the teammates. I mean, the the blessings are the people in this that are racing nowadays. And there, you still have those, um, you know, those asshole mom and dads that 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 beat down the kids and and oh, you know people. berate them and stuff and they're there's they're they're far and few but they're still out there but <laughs> but uh but it's it's just the kids and you know shout out to ancient city bmx and the clay pools and keith hurd and just all the people that that are putting that give back and that's what it is today i mean it it, it's you know I'll, I'll say i have the utmost respect for uh for keith hurd and 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 Tom knows him well, and and his son's not even racing, but he's out at the track every week helping kids. He wants, mm -hmm. oh, he he's, so he has killer. a team. It's mm -hmm. just it's just about putting, giving back. And, yeah, and yeah. that's that's, that's, that's where that's life. where everybody's at nowadays. Yeah. Is is you know what we 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 do what we can to just to give back and. Yeah. and Thank you to my brother Rick that 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 brought you know just just um just really beyond beyond grateful you know for what he did for me and and you know uh, being able to share some experiences and that and and, and with with our with uh, our bikes and stuff and it's just uh. uh True blessing and and just um, couldn't be more grateful to him. So thank you. Yeah. That was that was amazing. That's awesome. I find I'm, it's it's like God. These episodes are getting so fucking good. Like <laughs> it's two in a row now. Hey, I held it together. I didn't I cry tonight. So <laughs> yeah, I didn't. I didn't fully cry. It's we, amazing. We had a girl on last night and she's like, "Oh, we're gonna cry." And me and Max are like, "We've cried like a bitch so many." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, absolutely. But yeah, uh, guys. I mean, uh, bottom of my heart thank you. in Max's thank heart. You so thank, oh, thank you guys thank for having you for me. Coming Appreciate and talking. It. Me and Max. Uh, so. Ladies and gentlemen, keep treasure hunting. Big shout out to Bangtail Whiskey um, and. Like and subscribe. Tune in next week for the next one. And we can't wait to hear from these treasure hunters again. You. We'll Peace. be back.